Ugh, okay, come on. You can do it. Participants, invite. Copy invite link. Four. Right. Whew. That one out of here. Get this one out of here. Uh, let's do here. Let's do six, three. Six four six four. I think I'm gonna switch that. This looks good. I do my syllabus, canvas. Stuff that goes in here.
Hey. Good. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody's clicking in right now. I have about 26 people, which is really exciting. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. You guys remember Bear in the Big Blue House in the 90s? Welcome, welcome to my messy room. I'm kidding. I'm so excited to see you all. As my necklace is totally messed up back here. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. We're all getting ready. So it's 705. I mean, I want to be respectful of our time. But you know, when people sometimes, you know, canvas or zoom or whatnot, so it takes a minute. And then um, when there's a working feature, just to let you know, for all your classes. Um, that means that your professor has to be aware. I learned this one has to be aware, like over here on the side, it'll say people coming into the waiting room. So if I'm not aware, then they're just sitting there. So if that's you, that could be you. But you guys are here, you guys are here. <laughs> Excited. 26 people, let's make sure everybody's here. So here's so here's a fun little thing. Um, I am going to actually unmute, unmute you all so you guys can all say hi and then mute yourself again. Let's get loud for a second. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Hi. Hi. Might as well just all say hi at the same time, right? <laughs> I see Twee's head. I recognize your picture, Twee, because you just have like this of you and your light picture. <laughs> there, there's your glass. Good to see you. <laughs> so we're, tonight we're gonna go over like the syllabus, the canvas. We're gonna kind of answer a bunch of questions. We're gonna do as much as we can. Again, this is an online class. We do not have to meet, but I think it's important to maybe just check in in the first week just to get the ball rolling. A lot of you have already started doing the work, um, which is fantastic. So keep it up. Um, I do like to meet, but with my schedule and the kid and all kinds of stuff i i definitely <laughs> am trying to record videos ahead of time versus like having live meetings and you might be able to hear him in the back so i'm hoping that's he's not too loud and i told him if he was good he could come in at nine o'clock so like after the class um yeah he's super 13 right now like i just like you like want to love him so much but then you like want to like just like a little bit um but yeah he's earning to say hi because he loves to say hi to people so we're doing that so um, um professor laney i see a lot of um familiar faces but i see a lot of new people too so i'm really excited um if we are to meet again i will do the same thing i will post a link yeah oh, hold on sorry if you are going to be loud just mute yourself i can mute everybody but you guys can do it. um if we're going to meet again, I'll do the same thing. I'll post a link and I'll put it in pronto because I invited two classes to this one meeting. Yeah. So technically one section has 40, the other section has like 35. So we could have 75 people here right now. So I'm really excited to have you guys in. All right. I'm going to give it like two more minutes as people are joining. But let's see. Who do we have here? Okay. Hannah. Hi. hi. I'm not going to take roll. The role is going to be like replying to the announcement. Okay, I'm going to mute. You can unmute if you're talking, but if you're to the class. But if you're going to be loud, you got to mute yourself. Cool. Um, so what I was saying is that um, I have two classes that I invited tonight. We're going to go over the canvas. We're going to go over the syllabus. <laughs> It says SE student. I'm just gonna mute you. <laughs> it's okay. I know we have tech issues. We're all learning still. Even if you transitioned last semester or you've taken online classes, you know, technology is technology. And um, so again, I see familiar faces. I'm gonna go down the list. I'm not taking role. Your role is is your participation in the class. I can see next to your name how many minutes you've been on, how many pages you've clicked, if you've started the discussion board, if you haven't, like I can see all that stuff. We have analytics that tells me how many people you've responded to. It also tells me how, if you send me an email, how fast I re respond to you. 
So there's, it's not just us watching you guys. It's like watching me too. So in a good way, in a good way, because I want to make sure that I'm being attentive. This is going to be a funky semester, even though we're not transitioning, this may be some people's very first online class. And personally, I don't like online classes as a, as a student, because I kind of get bored or I, I kind of get distracted or I do other things and then I miss the stuff and whatnot. So I understand what it's like to be a student. So again, I'm Professor Laney. Welcome to our class. And um, you guys all get to see a peek into everybody's background, unless I put like, you know, a picture of Tahiti or whatever, but <laughs> my computer's too old to do that. So we're not doing that. <laughs> okay. So I see Hannah. Veloso, hey. Hannah Veloso, cool. Mm -hmm. Alejandra Manal. Yes, hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, oh, I think I met you last year, right? Last 107 year? with Darcy Cass, no? No. Ooh, I think I, I saw, I thought I saw you in a different class. Allie, Waffle, Brandy, hi. Caitlin, Courtney, Emily. Haven't seen you since last hi. fall, I think, right? I know, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Good to see you. You just Remember how new everything was and now you're like got this i know you're like it was so new and now you're like got it right <laughs> genesis see you again right i get some like repeat people <laughs> who else do we have um esperanza oh genesis ramirez and genesis hernandez nice um person iphone i don't know who that is um, and here's the thing, if you want to change your name, which I don't force you guys to do it, again, your participation shows up in Canvas, not exactly here. To me, this is just a bonus, right? If you ever want to change your name, I think you click on your name and you can just like, right? Or under profile. So that's just up to you. Uh, Yvette Velasquez, hi. Jasmine, Jenna, Jessica, uh, Katie, how are you? Uh, Katie's my honorary like um, fact checker for all of my classes. Um, Katie likes to remind me of the things that I forgot to do. <laughs> I'll take it because I forget a lot of stuff. So I have my little bullet journal of all the stuff that I have to do and then check it off. So that's all right here by every single day. Um, let's see. Leslie, Linda. Hi, Linda. Uh, Michelle, Crickshane, Paola, Jackie. No, Paola, right? Okay. Ta Tanya. Let's see who else do we got. Ulysses. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Great to join us. Glad to have you. Great. And Twee's here. And who else just jumped in? Let's see what. Tammy. Yeah, ah, all right. I'm just saying hi to everybody. So it looks like Tammy's there. Hi. Welcome. Um, who else did I not say hi to? Who did I miss? I want to say it like it's hi, like you're sitting in my classroom. <laughs> Sorry, I was iPhone. Okay. What, Carla? Yes. Okay, nice. Okay, good. Thank you for changing. I was able to change now it. <laughs> so now I know. I really like to get to know people, and this is kind of challenging to do that. So seeing your face helps. Um, your picture, profile picture, profile picture really, really helps. <laughs> and then this first intro video is part of that. Because again, I normally am the only professor from this department. There's two of us, and the, I'm the only one who teaches face-to-face. So I like that, get to know you, see your face, like, you know, see what, you know, learn about you, see what you eat on break and whatnot. <laughs> I'm having uh, my kombucha soda um, and water and water. Okay, good. So let me give it like a couple more minutes to see if people jump in because I invited 75 people and there's 30, which is good. I'll take it. But I'll take questions right now. Three questions right off the bat. Oh, don't play the quiet card because it's not going to work in here. Are, um, are we going to meet every single Thursday or just today? Just today. I would love, this is a 100% online class. I would love to meet. I can't promise every Thursday, but again, if there's something, let's say we have a big assignment coming up, I would rather meet and then I'm going to record it. And then if you can't make it, you email me and say, can I have a copy of the recording? So here's the deal with recordings. And if they are not closed captioned, if I haven't closed captioned them by any means necessary, I cannot post them, but I can share them one by one. Okay. <laughs> so I spent the summer doing all kinds of training. For those of you who have taken me before, you're gonna see a little bit of like polish up on the course shell and whatnot, a little bit more graphics, 
a little bit better organization. Um, so I spent the summer, you know, learning about everything. Like, honestly, there's not a day that I didn't have work in the summer, which is, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> I'm tired. Anyways, but making sure that the stuff is set up and all the backside stuff is set up is really, really important. So I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys a good and consistent experience, even though we're not face to face. So, so the question was, are we going to meet every week? No, sorry. But I'm trying to give you an experience that kind of is like that. I can't guarantee a recording every week of every chapter, but I'm trying really hard to do that. Um, they also, looking ahead, want us to break down the chapters instead of me recording a one-hour video or sometimes a two-hour video. They want to break it down into smaller snippets, and I totally understand that. So I'm trying to look at, like, the chapters in little chunks. And so if I can fire off a little chunk, I think that would be more helpful, especially with, like, concepts that people don't get. So... Let's looking ahead. Chapter three and chapter four are kind of confusing, not confusing, but very technical. So I'm going to be doing little pieces, little snippets there, here and there. But chapter one and chapter two are kind of intro and they talk about everybody and whatnot. But if it comes to like a very specific topic and I know even face to face, it's a struggle to catch it. I'm going to do a little video on it. And then you guys, I will close caption those ones and make sure that they're ready for you. Good. So I'm trying really, really hard to give you guys a similar experience as if you were in the classroom right now. I'm trying really, really hard. It's never going to be perfect. I'm never going to make everybody happy. But just know that I'm super committed and I'm just totally crazy. Yay! Samantha's here. Let's see, she's joining. It's going to take a minute. Samantha's here. Hi. Samantha, are you here? Hi, Miss Laney. Hi, good to see you. We haven't started yet. We just started. Uh oh, he's behind the door. Hold on. <gasps> Is it Peyton? Yeah, but I told him he could come in at nine o'clock if he was quiet. And if he's loud, he can't come in. <laughs> right? Okay, good. So let's do this. Um, all right, so it's like 7 15. So let's, nobody else is waiting. So this is really good. Let's jump into the syllabus. So Yes, I apologize. The syllabus link was not working. I had to go back and back and back and back. But let's pull that up. You guys, again, this paper syllabus is something I would hand out in class. Um, but in an online class, let me share the screen. In an online class, you don't have to have a paper syllabus. But I think some of us need it that way. And I mean us, meaning me. I like it in my hands. Um, let me get mine out here. And um, I like that. Do -do -do -do. Um, but all of the information that is in this paper syllabus is also represented on Canvas in different areas. So to me, some people like it like this, like a, on a paper. Let me share the screen. Some people like it on a paper. Some people don't have a printer. I want to make things nice and um, equitable for everybody. Excuse me. So however you appreciate it is how you're going to, you know, work with it. Yeah. Okay, good. So. Uh, again, I have two sections of the same class, which is pretty much the same thing as having one section with 75 people, but I think that's a little crazy. So I did separate it out, and but the information is exactly the same. So the section numbers are 86463 and 64. So in Canvas, when you guys message me, it'll tell me. It'll say like Katie De La Fuente, and it'll say 86464. So I know which section. So when you say this particular syllabus isn't showing, I'll know where to go. So that's helpful. That helps me. Um, but just know that when there's this much turnout, that means that there is a big need for this. And there is a big need for this. And we'll talk about that in a sec. So again, same intro for every class. Um, every professor is supposed to have the mission statement on there. So we have, we have standards that we have to hit. Um, all of our classes are online. You do not have to come. This is being recorded. I will share the recording if you need. You do have to email me and request it. Don't, I cannot post it. I do have office hours Monday through Friday, 1.30 to 2.30. <coughs> Every once in a while, those will be, those times will be adjusted, excuse me. I have allergies and not COVID. Um, sometimes those, those times are adjusted, but I'm also very flexible. 
Um, even though we don't meet Thursday nights, I carved out the time to be Thursday night. I'm like showing up for work just for you guys, no distractions. I've done that for every, every class. I like carved out exact time, but that doesn't mean if you email me on Monday, I'm going to wait till Thursday. So email me when you can. I will, but when I need to like update materials or I need to like polish the exam or whatnot, um, I'm doing it Thursday night. Yeah. Between six and nine. Um, so again, um, call me, I mean, I mean, call me, I did, I do normally share my cell number, but I'm going to try and do it with Google voice this time. Um, I, cause I did get a new phone a couple weeks ago. I had been saying I needed a new phone and finally admit it. So I went from the note five to the note 10, but they're coming out with a note 20. That's still how far I am behind. But, um, so the voicemail thing is weird and all this stuff. So I'd rather, if you guys really, really want to talk on the phone, we can do that. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. I have WhatsApp. We have Pronto. We can do a Zoom. We can do however you want. You want to do it face-to-face? -face? Cool. If you just want to do it on the phone, that's fine. I'm really, really open. I'm really, really committed to you guys. Here's our book. So this book is pretty straightforward. Um, get it however you want to get it. Electronic, loose leaf, hard copy. I gave my book to another professor. I have a, I have an electronic copy. Um, but again, the only materials you need for this class are how to get online, whatever device that you have. At some point, I will ask you to find some household materials. It doesn't have to be crafty stuff, but it's going to be like, I'm going to give you a task to go out and replicate this idea in household materials. And it could be stuff 100% for free. It could be recycled stuff. It could be whatever. So that's really the only requirements for this class. Have something that connects, consistent email. Um, and if there's any other... Um, resources that you are lacking or you need, just reach out to me out. I'd love to keep you guys connected. I'm really trying to make sure that, again, we are replicating the classroom experience as much as possible. So every class should talk about an overview. Again, we are going to talk about three things in this class. What is special needs? I'll give you a hint. It's a program. It's not a person. <laughs> We're going to talk about, like, so what is special needs as a program? What does it look like in a school, right? Um, what are the different things that qualify? There's 13 different categories that qualify for special needs programming. And then we'll talk about families. Like, how do we engage families? How do we support families? What's, like, for example, I, my son here is special needs. He's got ADHD, severe, and autism, high-functioning atypical autism. So there's a lot. <laughs> And as of last December, he was in a brand new school that really focuses on this. And so, you know, when we had a crisis this week, a couple of times, a teenage, a beautiful teenage crisis, um, all I had to do is reach out to the school. And I had like this nice team for the first time ever. Um, in previous schools, they would almost be like, well, that's your problem. Or that, and they would just do this little weird systematic rejection. And we are currently in due process, meaning we're suing the school district. So. I get to teach you guys all about what happens when somebody does their job wrong. And I get to teach you <laughs> what happens, what parent rights are all about. So we're gonna talk about the history of special needs, what it is, what it is, all the different things that qualify for special needs, and how to help them. Ooh, we got somebody's got a puppy. Good. No problem, just meet yourself, you're good. Title IX is a standard for all syllabi that should be on everything. That is a federal statute that you guys are protected. I mean, everybody is protected. Um, against discrimination and harassment. That includes stalking. Um, in this time of COVID, when we're all kind of like hold up indoors, domestic violence is on the rise, child abuse is on the rise, um, like neighbors against neighbors on the rise, people attacking people out, you know, and you're not wearing a face mask and all kinds of crazy stuff. If something happens to you that's funky, you are still covered even though you're not on campus. So I did put in the prep module uh, like three videos on that. So we have more information on that. Um, if something's funky, reach out to me. I'll see how I can help, okay? I'm not your therapist. I am your teacher, but I would love to get you connected. I had a student a couple of semesters ago who got shocked, like had an electrical shock at work, and she, like, couldn't focus. She couldn't, like, concentrate. She would have, like, panic attacks on it. She was, like, like almost like she was, like, struck by lightning. And um, sure enough, we connected her to health services and they pretty much said, yeah, you have post-traumatic stress disorder, that PTSD. And, um, and so we kind of, we get her some extra supports and whatnot. So 
it can, doesn't have to be like partner violence. It could just be something where you are not being supported or you're being discriminated against. Like, so she would tell her boss, I'm having problems because of this happened. They're like, well, we can just fire you. Well, no, that's against the law too. Um, next one is basic needs statement. I really, really love that, um, that Santiago has a lot of supports for students. Love, love, love that we have the pantry. Please use it. Everybody qualifies. Even if you're like, well, like my parents are fine or I didn't lose my job. Just go do it. Just go do it. Just go get it. <laughs> and share the food if you need to, right? It's fantastic. Um, we also have other things in there that we're trying to add to that, like basic needs, like um, healthcare items and whatnot. Um, academic accommodations. This is another federal statute. This is what protects everybody in the nation. This particular statement is a special needs statement. So this should show up, this protects everybody. According to the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, any student with a disability who would like to request accommodation, meaning if there's something about you that needs extra support, and I'll talk to you guys about my learning disability when we get to that. Um, if you guys need an extra support, let us help you. Okay, so my one student who couldn't concentrate, how is she supposed to take a test? Right, so in this class, I give everybody a one hour for the test, big deal. She needed an hour and a half and that helped. Yeah, so big deal. What's, what's the big deal if it takes you 60 minutes or 90 minutes? Does that change how smart you are? Does it change what you've learned? Does it change what you remembered? Does it take the edge off of your anxiety? Yeah, big deal, right? But you have to be registered with the DSPS department to get a letter sent to me and then I make sure that you are supported in the way that you need. Sometimes people need an audio recorded text. When I'm um, recording this through Zoom, um, it also may give me an audio file, which is really, really cool. So any questions so far? That's really like the, the stinky federal boilerplate stuff. Anyone? Just jump in if you have something. This is not something where you have to raise your hand or whatnot. We will do polling later. We will have breakout rooms later, just not tonight. We're just gonna keep it straight down the barrel. Um, so about this class, everything here from pretty much here down is all on Canvas and I'll show it to you in a sec. All the policies, the procedures, how I expect you guys to act, how I, what I'm looking for from you guys, what you guys can expect from me is all in here. So about this class, it basically says, um, Online classes can be challenging. Now, the information in this class is really not hard, hard. A lot of times there's real life that shows up in this class. So like, for example, we'll talk about um, intellectual disabilities, something like Down syndrome or uh, people with a lower IQ, or maybe there's a genetic disorder, right? And they're just developmentally delayed. <clears throat> you may already have experienced people like that. It might be somebody in your family. It might be your sibling, your parent, your child, right? So a lot of us have a pretty good foothold in the information that we already know in this class. So the class isn't hard. It just is consistent. We have 16 weeks. We have 15 chapters in 16 weeks. So this week we take our time to get a little bit ready. And then from here on out, it's one chapter every week. So it's, it's consistent. And that part of the semester where it's like exciting and everyone's like stressed out and then it's like, Oh, we took the first and then it starts trailing off and then at the end people are trying to get all their points it still happens in an online class but there's way i have like ways to you know keep you guys motivated <clears throat> now when it comes to the add and drop procedures i usually have everybody in class fill this part out like on your paper um but write this stuff down because i wrote it down on my cheat sheet Let's see um so the last day to drop this class of the refund is september 6th which is like not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Okay. If for some reason, like your work schedule changes or you look at the syllabus and you're like, this lady is crazy. That's cool. Drop. I'll see you next semester. It's fine. I'll be here. I'm, be, I'm hoping to be here for like 20 years. So come back. Um, so please, and please don't wait till the last minute. Cause you know, if like web advisor, or I guess we're using self-service now it gets weird or uh, just don't wait till the last minute. It's all good. Get your money back. Just, you have like two, two weeks, week and a half. Um, the data file pass or no pass. Now some, like if you're gonna transfer, some schools will take the pass or no pass and some won't. So please see a counselor first. I put that in um, the supportive information 
under, I think it was like 3.3, our counselors in there. Um, and then our last day to drop with a W was like week, like week, week 11 or something. It's so, uh, it is November 15th, but that means you don't get your money back. You get a W, which is better than F, but sometimes it's not. So again, please see a counselor. Okay. And while we're at it, there's three holidays. Labor Day is on the 7th, so it's not this Monday, but the following Monday. I have nothing to do. I won't, op I, you know, maybe I'll open the, the module the day before, but take the day. It's Labor Day. Jeez, we've worked hard for it. Even if you're not working, yeah, take the day. <laughs> I'm going to take the day. Um, Veterans Day is on 11-11, and then Thanksgiving, I want to say, is like the 27th through the 29th or something like that of November. So the weird thing about Veterans Day is on a Wednesday. Right. I do have things due on a Wednesday. I just push it back the second day. It's all good. We're going to be fine. I promise. I promise. Um, student conduct. Um, I should maybe call this student like cheating or plagiarism. Uh, don't do it. There's no reason in this class to do plagiarism. None at all. Um, we'll do maybe some research stuff in here and I'll teach you guys how to cite your sources. Um, and then we will even have like a little like info session on how to like not plagiarize because I think in high school that they, they kind of talk about it but they don't really talk about it enough. A lot of um, college students don't know what plagiarism means. It just means copying somebody else's words to use as your own. You can you can borrow somebody's idea but you can't use their words. Okay there's an ownership there and if you do just mention so like if you were using our book and you wanted to um, note our book you know uh, you would say Scow is the author paid comma 156. I'm okay with that. And we'll talk more about that more, but don't cheat in this class. And I set it up to where you don't have to. Okay. I'm on the student contact committee. We talk about cheaters all the time. It's embarrassing for you. It would be embarrassing for me, but I have a teenager. So I've gotten over that. Um, number two, I'm on the campus care team, which is the cross between the health supportive services and cause student conduct. Um, yeah. Like just chill. You don't need to cheat. There's no, now here's the deal. If you do, uh, we have to talk to the chair, then the dean, then the vice president of academic affairs. Then sometimes it does go to the president, besides the student conduct committee. Then it goes on your transcript. Then you can't transfer. I mean, it's like, don't do it. Let's stop it right now. I ask your opinion so much in this class. If you have to feel the need to go copy your opinion from somebody else, that's a problem. And I have no problems giving you an F on that assignment. Trust me. <laughs> This kid was lipping off to me. I scooped up a bunch of his stuff and went and donated it to, to Goodwill. Yeah, I'm that mom. Yeah, 100%. He has this, this habit of like getting stuff from the neighbors. Now, if it's stuff that he like earned his allowance and he bought, I'm not going to take it away, right? Or even a gift that somebody gave him. But like hustling a full on surfboard from the neighbor, uh -uh, not happening. Or like a, a $90 helmet. I was like, what? no, stop. So yeah, mama ain't having it. Good. Um, communicating online. I'm telling you right now, I'm a casual professor. I'm kind of like loose, but I don't like it loose in the communication. You might get a winky from me, like in a message back and forth, but um, keep it, you know, keep your eyes capitals, you know, don't be texting me like this is, you know, Twitter or Insta or whatnot or TikTok, whatever. Keep it professional. Even me, I'll re be answering emails to even somebody who's like a staff member and I will say, dear Amanda or Amanda, thank you so much for your question. I appreciate your support, blah, blah, blah. Like I will write what I mean to write and then I'll stop for a second, but a greeting, a salutation, make it sound a little bit more formal. And that's what college is for. I do suggest Grammarly.com and then Netiquette is a, like a link that's also in the prep module 3.2, something like that. Um, also communicating with me, um, please stay in communication. People sometimes will come at the end of the semester and like, oh, well, I had to move to Texas and it was hard for me to take your class. Yeah, I could understand that, but how do I know if you don't tell me, right? I am not psychic. I've seen a lot of things, I could see patterns happening, but I'm not psychic. Um, but yeah, I did add in this class, that I expect to have a, like some sort of meeting with you twice a semester. I don't care if it's on emails, like a check-in, usually around 
week five and week 12 is when I really check in to make sure everybody's on track. Um, but it's just your participation points. And we'll talk more about that later. But um, communicating with me, the very best way to get a hold of me is Canvas. When you put something in Canvas, it goes to my Canvas inbox and it also goes to my regular email inbox. But if you send it to my email, it doesn't go to Canvas. So when you give it to Canvas, you get two. When you get email, you get one. So always go in Canvas. My mode in the morning is I wake up, I check Canvas first, and then I check my emails. Like today, I didn't even get to my emails till like one in the afternoon. But Canvas first. Good? Fair. And okay, and before I go forward, the next is like what we're doing in this class. Questions? I'll take three questions before I move on. For those of you who have taken me before, you know I'm just going to stare at you. Three questions. Seriously, I'm going to sit here until we keep going, until you ask. What was the last day to um to file for pass or no pass? The pass or no pass date is 9-25. So September 25th, the question. Where can we buy our book? Uh, anywhere. I would start at the bookstore because they have, once you click into the bookstore, they have like side-by-side -side comparison. Is and the again, SEC to, oh, bookstore open? Is, is the library open? The library is open. The bookstore is open. The bookstore is also doing like curbside pickup and stuff. You can only, you can place your order online for the bookstore and go get it when they tell you it's ready, but you can't just go in and yeah, shop. Yeah, you can't go cruise. You can't go cruise the bookstore. No, no, no. But it's um, available and, and open for you. Like, if to if we book. wanted to, can we like buy or not buy, like, can we get one that's used and use yeah. our library card? For sure. Rent it. Who rented their book already? I did. I did. What, what was your source? Uh, um, CC Bookstore. How much was it? Um, I think it was like 30 bucks for a used rental, but more, way more when you get it now. And the cool part about it is that if you don't have the money and you have financial aid, um, it has like a little link on the bottom and you just click FA and then your books are already um, are bought. Fantastic. Follow up on that. Um, somebody asked me if um, you need a link for our book. Nope. I do not use publisher materials. I do not use the send gauge. I do not use the um, whatever linky stuff that they, that the book wants you to, if now, if you bought a book and it comes with a CD or something like that, just don't open it. And then on book buyback, they'll take it back for a better price. Yeah. Um, but for me that all that publisher send gauge, like all that stuff is just an extra canvas. And those guys are publishers. They are not authors. They are not professors. They are not researchers. They are salespeople. You ain't writing my class. You ain't lecturing my class. I write the tests. I write the quizzes. I write the content. And why would you, why would it need to cost more money? Why do we need to have things that are confusing? Nope. Let's keep it simple and keep it, let's, let's keep it good and simple. Fair? Did you let Peyton at least ride the surfboard before you made him give it back? Yes. Ah. yes. He got to ride it once, but he's not a stand-up kind of kid. He's not a great swimmer. Um, and, and my husband was like, oh, the surfboard. And I was like, I said, give it a sec. And he goes, you know what? You're right. He can't really even use it. <laughs> and I was like, fair. I said, you know what? He's got, we've got good boogie boards. And here's another thing. Uh, he's now earning allowance. And trust me, it's hard work. <laughs> and so he's earning money. And so now he, now that he has money, I was like, look, we'll go buy one with your money. And it's not, I, I just feel like with his boundaries, he's going to be hold, he's going to be beholden to somebody. And he has questionable body autonomy boundaries. He's gotten into trouble a lot for body stuff. So I had to take that off the table. Had to take, and by the way, I have a letter drafted and, I, and I'm not calling out the neighbors at all. I'm just, he's also like going like two streets away on his bike, he's not supposed to. So like, it was like problem, 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 shut it down. Like he, it went overload. So now I have like a, hey, we're the ladies and you may have seen our child and I'm sure he's been very friendly with you, but he could get you into trouble. <laughs> 
you know, that kind of thing. So that's the next step. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big one. It'll be fun. Good, good question. All right, excellent. So you guys have more than three questions. Just hilarious, hilarious. Okay, good. So let's talk about what's going on in this class. I kind of revamped it just a tiny bit. I'm really trying to be mindful of the online and, and environment and going back to our student learning outcomes at the very beginning right here, um, where it says recognize exceptionalities, evaluate the role of history and collaborative families. That's what I need to measure. I don't need to be doing busy work in here. I don't need to be doing, um, I know typically I do an, an observation in this class. I took it out for now. It's not required. I would like it to be required, but instead of an observation, we're gonna watch a movie and observe a movie. It's not horrible. It's not the greatest thing and it's not horrible. It's somewhere in between. So for our assignments, I kind of like revamped them a little bit, but let's do, let's first talk about um, the late policy. So if you've taken me before, I'm usually pretty good about saying if it's late, it's half off. Um, this semester, we're trying something different. It's called target dates instead of due dates. Now, all these policies are also listed under the syllabus in Canvas, also under po Laney policies, and I think I want to say like 2.2 .2 or something like that, maybe 3.2. I don't have that memorized yet, it's new. But students are re re responsible for completing the work. Do the work, get the points. Yeah, that's how you pass the class. But you, if, here's the deal. Shoot for the target date. Now, some of you are going to have a real problem with this. <laughs> Some people are just like, oh my God, what if I'm late? How many points are you gonna take off? And the answer is zero. I would rather you take a deep breath, turn something in three days late and give me good quality work than stress out and give me crap. So take, everybody take a deep breath. There's nothing late in this class. Now, when I say that, don't let it blow up in your face because if you wait too long so let's say you know let's say next week we're going to be jumping into chapter one but if you're kind of still trying to get your feet under you and you're letting chapter one go like into another week and a half or two weeks now you're kind of letting everything pile up on you and who has extra time at the end of the semester nobody right so get things in close around that target date Does that make sense get them in there close I'm not gonna freak out if you're a little bit late because again, right now, even though we're in, in COVID and maybe we're looking at, you know, getting back things, getting back to normal, we still have this part of our brain that's in panic mode. And when we're in panic mode, we're not learning well. So maybe it takes you a little bit of extra time to do it. But here's another thing, keep this in mind, you can do it early. When we go through our weekly thing, you don't have to wait till Sunday to turn stuff in. You can do it Saturday, you could do it Friday, you could do all your work for this class on a Monday. That's the beauty of number one adulthood, number two online learning. Yeah, right? So I'm really trying to give you guys an opportunity to be your best self, not my best self. I am my best self, no kidding, <laughs> no kidding. I try, but um, a lot of times miss that mark and sometimes pass the mark. So somewhere in between is good, yeah? So. Every week I do require an outline. Now I did push that back to a Wednesday night. Um, some of my like day classes, I was like Monday morning, boom, like it ain't playing. But this one was like, okay, so let's say maybe you work on Monday and Tuesday when all you have is time on Wednesday. Great. Or maybe you work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but you had time on Sunday to prep it. Ah, do it on Sunday, do it, submit it early. Literally, I'm only looking for two pages. Some people will outline 10 pages, eh, upload two. If you're the type of person that was going to like maximize two pages and then do nothing else after that, that's cool too. That's your deal. It's just a formalized um, motion to get you guys connected to the chapter. Because trust me, I spent years trying to be like cheerleader and learning all this stuff for you and shoving it down your throat and be like, it's like, guess what? I love this stuff. I got it. I don't need to get it more. I'm always learning new stuff you guys need to get it and it outlines just one little piece of it now when i say an outline i really just mean notes now it could be your way to do notes some of you are like Tick -a -tick -a -da -da -da. some of you um like handwrite puffy glitter paint some people mind map some people use cornell notes i put all of those as a suggestion under the module that says supportive information we'll talk about that too when we get over to campus 
So low stakes outline. Check this out. Lowest outline is dropped at the end of the semester. So what? I give you an extra five points. If there's a week that you forgot, if there's a week that you're just like, I'm taking the week off. Hey, Tim. <laughs> he just said he learned Cornell notes today. Beat it. Do not come. If you come in right now, you're going to have a consequence. And then he'll pick up the dog and pretend she's scratching at the door. So then I open the door and it's him and her. And I'm like, oh, he's like, yeah. Um, then every class and technically online classes are required to have discussion boards. We are required by the state of California to have ongoing contact with peer to peer. So the discussion boards. Now I did bump those up to 10 points because I'm going to replicate the activities that we would do in class. Yeah. So it's like, go do something and then come show us. Right. Um, and again, in this class, you only have to like reply to two or more people. And I have a new class this semester 120. It's five people because it's a smaller class and it's more intense. So just know that when I say two people make it three, it's nice, right? You keep it up there. Plus, you guys are going to get to know each other really well. It's really kind of cool. Okay. Um, again, look at I, I, I dropped the lowest one. So there's 10 points I give you at the end of the semester. Now, this personal learning journal that I added, I added this deep dive piece to it. It's also like a reflection. And again, this is where, for those of you who have taken me before, I have all the, you know, here's the lecture, here's the outline turned in, here's, here's the journal, here's all this stuff. But at the end, I had all these like resources that were extra that didn't really fit into the chapter, but there was things that I collected over the years that were really cool to either watch or see or connect to. You guys get to pick one of those and connect that to what you learned. So basically, you're going to reflect on what you learned, but also connect something new to it. Now, my list may not interest you. Go find something else. I'm putting the onus of learning on you. On you. Because why take this class if you're just going to like memorize a book and just spit it back out on an exam? Lame. It's not how I work. That's not how life works. Learning should be what you need to learn. I am done with the professor saying, you have to learn all this. Well, yeah, you, there's these student learning outcomes, but how we get there should be very individualized. Every single person's brain in this class and in the world is different. Why would I teach neurodiversity but not support neurodiversity? There's no way I think like you or you think like me. And for professors, this is just my pet peeve, for professors to say, you gotta do it my way, that's not, life isn't that way anymore, or at least it's shifting and people are starting to kind of catch a clue, right? There's been these funky silver linings of quarantine, right? There's some people who really thrive and there's some people who have to really revamp their life choices, right? Who knew my husband was gonna lose his job at Disney for all places, right? But guess what? When the world shuts down, entertainment goes. Yeah. So it's really kind of interesting, right? So what I'm saying is that this personal learning journal, it used to be an open prompt that said, like, tell me what you learned. How do you connect it to you? Now it's like, tell me what you learned, what made sense to you, and connect it to something else. To connect to the chapter, but connect to something else. Make it meaningful for you. So that's why it's 10 points instead of five. But I will drop the lowest one because again, life happens or there's maybe a topic that you just don't connect to or you forgot, big whoop. So at the end of the semester, if I give you 25 points, trust me, that's not gonna make or break your grade. But maybe last semester, 25 points helped out like two or three people across six classes. Could help, yeah. So same with assignments. I'm doing, I do an intro bias assessment where we kind of just check in. What is our experience with the special needs community? Where, what do we think? What do we feel? How do we see them? How do we can connect them? And when I say them, I don't mean them, I mean us. We all have special needs at some point, right? Um, we're gonna do a movie analysis. I have a couple of movie suggestions, but you guys can pick your own. It has to do with the special needs, personal special needs. Um, teacher interview. I think I might take that out now that I'm looking at it. I'm considering that, but at the same time, talking to a teacher um, who special needs is really important, but at the same time, I don't wanna make you guys go find that teacher. I think that's too hard right now. Um, so if I can interview people that I know who are special needs teachers, 
that I will provide the videos and you guys will analyze it. So it'll be like two teachers and you guys will analyze it. So I'm thinking about that. I'm like going back and forth in that. I think it's really important to know what a teacher's looking at right now. <coughs> I have a friend of mine who just got off the phone with me like an hour ago and she's a second, third grade combo teacher, gen ed. She was an RSPA, meaning she was a helper in a special needs class. Her kid, Anita, was an RSP. And she's just a gen ed teacher now. And she's like, this is, she's like, this is the worst. <laughs> she's like, I can barely even handle my class versus the kids who need extra support. She's like, I only cried twice today. I was like, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a K-12 teacher right now. It is weird doing this, but you guys are all adults. Second and third graders, you guys, that's like eight and nine year olds. Like I, my heart breaks for everybody. It is a lot. And this was my friend who just got her credential like three years ago. And up to that point, after starting her credential program at Cal State Fullerton, could barely even, barely even email or text. And now she's got to do all this. Stuff. It's like, there's a lot. And so I want you guys to see what that's like, even a gen ed teacher with kids on the, in special needs in her class, because that's called inclusion. And then I do have like a preschool teacher who can talk about inclusion as well. So that's, it's meaningful, but I don't want to like overload you guys. Uh, and then we're going to do a special needs PSA. If, question? I have a question. Yeah, Katie. Yeah, yeah. If, we have, if we have a friend that's a special needs teacher, could we interview them? If I, yeah, I might be open that for that. I might be open for that, yeah. I'm really flexible. The thing is, I want you to find meaning out of it versus just going through. So if you really have some questions, for your friend, like, how do you do this? Or what motivates you? Or what frustrates you? Or how do you handle, like, if that's a cool permission to go, you know, deep dive with a friend that you would normally talk about that stuff about, absolutely. I'm pretty flexible about that. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, good question. Good question. Cool. Thank you. I just didn't want to force everybody to go find a special needs teacher because not everybody knows what. But if you got it in, inside the scoop, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question. Let's say like Peyton needed like extra attention in his schooling and since you're you're a teacher you could have like helped him out with it and let's say you needed to take this semester off. Would the school let you take that semester off and just like not pay you like you would be okay with it or like You mean like my college? Yeah, like SCC. Like do they like make you do all these classes for the semester or can you be like you know what i just need a break for the semester i need to help my kid that's a great question that's a great question let me answer that kind of quick because i want to make sure that we're going down here um so logistically as a college professor i do work for the state of california so mm -hmm. technically i am like an extended high school teacher technically uh -huh. 13 to the 14th grade right uh -huh. Um, so for the college process i know for the credential process in a high school you you are on probation for two years Meaning like, if you can't hack into two years, you're gone, right? But once you pass your second year, you're in. Like you're like kind of in with the union, you can't get fired. Our process is four years. <laughs> I just started my third year. Oh. So if I were a tenured professor, like if I passed my four years, mm -hmm. probably. I could have probably taken a sabbatical or a medical leave or a family. I think there's like a family emergency leave act, FMLA. Um, but as an untenured professor, no, <laughs> I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't. So ironically that my husband, you know, got furloughed. It's been helpful, right? Because during the day, like I do have my 107 class that I do lecture, right? Mm -hmm. Like synchronous. He's sitting out there in class. <laughs> He's on a bell schedule. He's not the check in once, once a week and get your homework and then turn it in. He's yeah. on a bell schedule. By the way, his school's got it dialed in and his grades went up last semester. Wow. So, yeah, so it, there's a really interesting different cultural piece, but thank you for asking Genesis, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's fun. It's not easy. It, it, like I, if ever somebody said to me, you'd be teaching from home while your kid's learning from home, I'd be like, you're crazy. Yeah. Like my mom's friend, she had to like completely quit her job just so she can stay at home taking care of her two kids that are doing yeah. online schooling. Yeah. That's two. Yeah. And trust me, his aide at his school last year, when it all shut down, he lost his job. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, and he even said, I'm staying home with my two, my two kids. And my, yeah. my wife's going to work. I, we, it's going to the other. Yeah. 
and think about it like I mean, how many times do you, would you love to go repeat the third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade as a group? Nobody, <laughs> like nobody. Even my husband's like, I've already passed the fourth grade. I said, so did I, but I got an A. So, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, so it's, we're all in a new normal. Um, and I'm hoping that this is not like the new normal, like the new normal. We're trying to find like a silver lining to all of it. And I, I see little sparkles here and there. Um, but I do see that there's number one, I don't know if you guys have heard me before in my other classes where I talk about like the teachers and the parents need to work together. Guess what? I got my wish. Yeah. <laughs> parents have been throwing it on the teachers and teachers have been like throwing it. Have you guys heard it? What do yeah. these p people do with their kids all weekend? And what do these p teachers do with my kids all day? This whole thing all is right. done. It's done. It's this now, whether we like it or not. Yeah, all my aunts in Mexico, they were, like, saying, like, oh, now the parents can't complain about the, the teachers teaching. Now they have to be the teachers and, like, do all you know, the it's a weird thing. You can't take somebody else's perspective. You can't, when they say walk a mile in that person's shoes until you actually do it. Mm -hmm. So all these parents who have been, like, oh, let them teach my child. You know, it, but it, not everybody's good at it. So some people, like, kind of drop the ball. Some people pull their kids out of school completely. You know, the laws have to be adjusted that we have to look at like what's, you know, some people are just scared and paranoid. We can't force them. But there's a thing where we like really try to encourage people to keep their children educated because then what? They're yeah. behind and maybe they are going to remediate and then they're going to struggle the rest of their, it, there's a lot to consider. But I look at it like, yeah, even my husband's like, this isn't fair. I don't want to have to be his teacher. This is called new parenting. I don't, I don't think you get a choice. Or you have a choice. You can just say no, but then what? First of all, they didn't happen in my house, but okay. <laughs> Plenty of parents like done. They're gone. Yeah. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. And I I'm hoping that it's over. So even my talk to my friend, she teaches in Chino. And I she's like, You guys are off the watch list. You guys can start kind of like his school can start coming back. And we 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 might have like on campus classes at the eight week mark. You know, so there's these things she, she's like, she's like, San Bernardino, she's like, my campus, I get like those notifications of a new COVID case for, on our campus. She's like three times a week. San Bernardino is like, boom, 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 what's going up? And it's like, I don't wish this on anybody. Don't wish this on anybody. Yeah. Oof. We're going to make it. It's going to be funky and it's nothing's ever going to be the way it was, but I'm hoping that that's a good thing. My crisscross applesauce, who are like, <laughs> but good question, Genesis. There's a trust me. There's a lot to consider. Even up to last week, he started last Friday. We didn't even know if he was going to be in his school or online because he had summer school at school. It's a private school. He could they could do whatever the hell they want, and they oh, did, wow. and nobody got sick. <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, it was like. We're like shifting gear, like, and then, yeah. And then they're like, he could probably come back to school soon. And I'm like, I didn't do any school shopping. Like there's this weird, everything's in flux. And so I think we're all trying to radically do the best that we radically can at every radical moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a weird time right now. It is a weird time. So if you guys ever are struggling with whatever stuff, please reach out. Please let me help you. Uh, instead of doing a, um, What's the word? Uh, we used, I used to call it a capstone project. And we're going to do a special needs PSA. It doesn't have to be super creative. It could be a pamphlet. It could be a five slide presentation. Um, we're going to have different topics about special needs. Just like if you're going to educate the public about, um, you know, asthma. Asthma can't, a severe asthma can qualify somebody for special needs education. Things like that, right? Or if you guys want to talk about deaf blindness or something that's, you know, something that's really near and dear to your heart and then at the end we're going to put all the stuff into a portfolio now portfolio is a new feature that canvas actually owns and so it's a way for all of us um, all of us to have our work put in one place because i don't know about you but you can't go back to canvas and find your stuff you have to put it in a place that kind of looks like linkedin or maybe like a facebook situation for your work and just putting that together is 50 points. Super easy. You guys can click on that link and po poke around. You literally just make a profile like a Facebook page. And I know you guys are too cool for Facebook. Oh, I get a, I get a, right? <laughs> I don't use it a lot either, but it's like a header and here's your name and here's your information. And this is the class and this is your work. And trust me, 
if that's the next step of our future, that's the next part of our career education, our saying, this is what I did in this class and this is what I learned in this class. Because if you guys are considering transferring to Cal State Fullerton, they're gonna ask. And I know we're articulated with them with this class because that's what I do on the backside. But they're gonna say, oh really, tell me about whatever you did with multi-tiered systems of support. And you're gonna be like, boom, that's what I did because it's in my portfolio. And you can add all your classes to it too, especially for education and child development majors. We're not gonna have a binder portfolio anymore where it's all gonna be electronic. Yeah, so I'm really excited. Just putting that together is 50 points. It's like a test, yeah. Then we will have tests in the class, quizzes every week, super easy. You may use your book, you have 30 minutes, you have two chances, you can work with a friend, super easy, it's kind of gross. Our exams are a little bit more challenging, but I don't do a midterm and a final. I do after each unit. There's four units. First unit is four chapters, four chapters, four chapters, three chapters. Boom. Pretty easy. I do the book a little bit out of order to make sure the chapters are a little bit. So one through four is right. It's all in order. The middle unit kind of goes four, five. I'm sorry, it goes five, six, nine, eleven. It kind of goes out of order. And then it'll it will be a little bit more out of order when we combine autism and, and ADHD and gifted and emotional stuff. We'll kind of put that out of order. And then the last three will be 11, 12, uh, 12, 13, 14. So I'll go through that again. Also, I do have extra credit. A lot of people don't need it because guess what? If you give me your movie analysis paper and it's super awesome, I can give you 27 points, 28 points, 35 points. So extra credit is everywhere. Okay. But if you need to do this, and I will post things like, hey, PBS is running this documentary tonight, watch it, give me a two-page paper, there's five points, right? But 15 points kind of just helps out, maybe your test wasn't as strong as you wanted it to be. That 15 points will help, yeah? Cool, any questions so far? This is what, this, this is what we're doing all year, a year, four months. We do have a new rubrics tab, and I'll have that populated when I start populating these guys. Cool, questions? I have a question, like, um, like you did like uh, last semester where you kind of gave us those like outlines where you kind of like you filled in the blank kind of a thing. Okay, so Caitlin's asking about my 110 class. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Like that kind of like format kind of thing. You mean for the outlines? Yeah. I don't provide those in this class. Okay. <laughs> but if that's how you're used to it, then make them on your own. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. So in 110. I'm just curious. Uh, say it again. I was just curious. If you yeah, it's okay. In 110, I have a lot of those tools in place because it's a more of an intro class and I taught it for so long. Um, this one, you know, I could use that, but um, I think you got it. Right. This is a two, 200 level class. So it's a little, I want to do more um, responsibility on the student. Right. And again, for the outlines, I'm only really looking for two pages. So if you want to just do two pages and then just blow off the rest, that's fine. If you want to do, you want to upload eight pages of puffy glitter paint, that's cool with me too. Mind map, Cornell notes, all that stuff. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. good, good question, Caitlin. Okay, good. Um, so the grading is pretty straightforward. Every unit's, every um, chapter is like this. There's an outline, there's a discussion board, a quiz, and a journal. I did take off. When we get around Thanksgiving, I kind of took off a lot of stuff I, for chapter 12. I'm just making us have an outline. We're going to skip the journal. We're going to skip the discussion board, that kind of stuff. I'm trying to be realistic here. Yeah. So with Ms. every Lainey. unit, there's there's a test, 50 point test. Miss Laney. Yes. What's the scavenger hunt? Oh, we'll talk about that. I did make a scavenger hunt for the first week that makes you look through the syllabus, look through Canvas, and you answer it like a, like a quiz. Cool. Yeah, it's super fun, and there's no time limit, and you can take it as many times as you want. So basically, the discussion board, do, do well on it, 30 points. Scavenger hunt, it's an easy 25 points. So after the first week, you could have the equivalent of like an exam. I, I do have one more thing to say. Um, I will be going to San Diego next week for my birthday. Do we have class? Or should I bring my computer with me to San Diego? Yeah, I would just say no matter if you guys are traveling, keep working. Now, but don't freak out because remember, I'm giving target dates. And so, like, if you're a little bit late on stuff, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Right? So, like, you know, take a couple of days to, like, 
rest, relax, and recharge. Be safe, obviously. Um, but like, you know, outline's not that hard. You, you, you got it, right? Because you took 107 and 110. You, you, like, you, like, you're better, like way better at it now, right? You know what to expect, right? And, um, but at the same time, remember, like, if you um, miss the quiz, just take it later. It's like not a big deal. Discussion boards are a little bit more timely because nobody wants to be talking about a um, chapter three discussion board when we're in chapter 10. So if you keep up on that, that's cool. That keeps you current with the conversation and that, that matches the chapter that we're learning. Um, but all this stuff kind of builds on itself, right? So again, one, two, and one, two, three, four is like a foundation chapter kind of like every class you take is like what's the history where did this come from what are the terminology what are some of the rules right once you learn those things they apply to the rest of the chapter so when we get into chapter five this is um speech and language disorders and then learning disabilities and intellectual disabilities and physical disabilities everything that you learn this is like your abcs over here in unit one it all applies to all the units right if we're talking about how to refer to a person with person first language in chapter one person first language applies to chapter five and six and nine and eleven right so it's it's again these are our abcs of special needs and then they every single one of these is a specific disorder right so here chapter seven is adhd chapter eight is emotional issues 10 is autism and 15 is gifted yeah last is uh the deaf community the vision, like low vision and blindness, and then in deaf blindness, like the very, very rare ones. So every, again, every unit has an exam. There's also participation, every unit, and participation, I'll put a rubric up. It's based on how much you interact on the discussion boards, how much you interact with the pages, how much time that you've spent, things like that. Okay. Uh, and then here's our assignments. Here's our bias assessment, movie analysis, teacher interview, our PSA and portfolio. Nice and clean. Oh, uh, one, one last thing too. Is there somebody behind you? Is there I somebody else? Like behind you like moving? You know what? Like, I have a little bit of a shadow. Do you see it? No, like is it like, like behind you? Like we'll think there's like a, a head, a is blue it, and green white shirt. Yeah, that. It I is. Don't know if that's like, a, like a person. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. Is that freaking you out a little bit? I'm like, is that something behind you? I'm like, is that, is that pain behind you? I'm like, I can't <laughs> Um, that's, so just because, um, you're like a super Disney fan, that's all Disney memorabilia right there. Nice. In that cabinet. And it's not mine. It's my husband's. I'm like, you may have one cabinet in my office and that's it. And he's like, oh, I see you're trying to hide all that stuff. I was like, a little bit. A little bit. Do not come in. Oh, letting the dog in. <laughs> she's she's just as bad. She's the door so you have Do not lock the door. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, Peyton, never changed. Never changes. His hair did a little bit. He got a little bit more of it. I <laughs> will attend to you in a moment, little girl. She's just as bad as him. I swear to God. So our class schedule looks like this. Let's do um. Let's do some color. Let's do some color fun. So our very first week, I kind of like make this like green because we're ready to go. Right. Hold on. Let's do this. She literally is right here. I'm not gonna put you on screen either. You haven't deserved it, I told you. <laughs> she's, she's kind of a big brat. Um, so let's make this, we're gonna make this green. And then chapter, oh, sorry. Chapter one, our unit one. So we're just start, starting to talk about like um, the intro stuff, like thinking about exceptionalities. Now, Labor Day is actually technically not till here. So let me move, let me make this, let me change this. And I will post an updated, um, let's see, let's take out the color here. I like how it says Labor Day, campus closed. It's yeah, closed it's supposed anyway. to be the next week. I'm so excited <laughs> it was Monday, it's not, it's down here. <laughs> it's technically the seven. Oh yeah, but technically this campus is closed. Like we're not supposed to assign anything, give you anything. We don't expect anything turned in, but I don't shut off Canvas. So you guys, you know, how many times have you guys worked at your job on Labor Day? I'm doing it, you know. So that I one usually is, have it off because my, my birthday usually falls on the 5th on Labor Day. Yay. But it's on the 7th this year, so mine's on a Saturday. Yeah, or next that, Saturday. that works. So what's a good color for, like, the first unit? Not green, but... How about light blue? 
Nice. Let's do light blue. This is a pretty one. This is like a robin's egg blue. Yeah. Cool. So when unit one rolls around, it's four chapters. Right? I'm trying to make it all pretty. And this is, again, the foundation stuff. So first we talk about thinking, I'll make it a little bit bigger, thinking about exceptionalities, meaning like what is special needs, right? And what's, what, what is normal? What is not normal? What is abnormal? What is neurodiverse? What is diverse? What, what's the deal? Trust me, the world is shifting into everybody's different, finally, finally, because we all are, yeah. Um, chapter two is again, supporting all learners. And this even means students who, without special needs. We have to talk about playing a game with the same rules. Like when's the last time you guys played a board game? Does everybody have different rules? No, we have to have the same rules. So the same like um, conduct rules in the classroom are the same as for everybody, not just kids on the special needs program. So chapter three talks about the cultural piece and what's it like? I mean, just because somebody speaks a different language doesn't mean that they're not as smart. And so there's some bias that shows up there. And this last, this last one in that unit is basic guarantees, individualized program, specialized services, which is an IEP. I paint IEP right here, I'll share with you guys. It, there's a lot, there's a lot. Um, so if you look at this, I'm gonna make this a little small. Uh, you, there's an exam at the end of the unit, but right before that, there is an assignment. So in three weeks, we'll have an assignment. I'll post that this, I'll post that by Monday. It really is watch a video and give me a reflection, answer some questions, pretty easy right? But I don't put a, an exam on the same day as an assignment. But then again, if for some reason you didn't get your assignment in on that exact day, is the world going to fall apart? This is also going to help open up some flexibility for some of you who are like really rigid on two days. You know who I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> so again, here's the exam. Is it a, like, I say here it's due by eight o'clock and yeah, I put that in there. But if you turn it in at 9.30, is anything going to happen to you? Nothing is going to happen to you. Nothing. Get it in. Don't stress out. Give me quality work. Because you know what? You're giving yourself quality work, right? Good. And so then the next unit. So what would be like, if you're thinking of like ADHD and autism, what color would you put? Yellow. Yeah, let's do a yellow. Let's make it maybe... Yellow's a little wacky, check this out. Uh, how about this yellow? Oh, that looks like. Ooh, maybe lighter. Yeah, that, I know that looks like a kidney problem. Okay, <laughs> let's do orange. <laughs> so then we get into the, this is what people, um, this next part, well, this is not the ADHD one, not yet. But this is the next one where you see the most show up. The speech and language, when you have a kid with a lisp or a stutter, you know, and things like that. And you'll get the speech and language stuff shows up with the little kids first, right? Because they're not, reading yet they're not writing yet but they're speaking so you might see speech and language things show up first then after that when they start to actually write more and have to do math you'll see like some processes in the brain that need more support so that's learning disabilities then intellectual disabilities is what we used to call like mentally retarded we don't say that anymore uh, chapter 11 is physical and health disabilities and this you'll see again this is where diabetes and asthma or a person in a wheelchair shows up right so these are very common. This is what, I, the reason I put them out of order, five, six, nine, 11, these are the ones that people are most familiar with. And so we, again, we learned the rules in the first unit. Second unit is like, okay, let's talk about the stuff we already know. Then we switch into the ADHD and autism. So what do you guys think? What color? Purple. Red. red. Okay, let's do red. Let's make it not super red. That's a good red. That's kind of a dusty red. Okay, so let's do that because you know this is kind of edgy. No joke. This is a lot. This is intense, right? Um, because you'll have kids who are have ADHD, and there's other with the ADHD. Sometimes it's kind of like the like checked out kind, and you know it's not as intense, but there's still a lot of struggle there, right? Emotional and behavior disorders. A lot of anxiety is showing up a lot more with kids now, um, even little kids, especially now. And then we talk about autism spectrum disorders. Very fascinating. This is this whole unit is what people are like. I want to learn more about autism. And guess what? Autism sometimes has a big emotional piece. When this kid was like, can't even tell you, cannot even tell you, tore his room apart Tuesday night, and then like put it all back together even better and rearranged it. I was like, can we stop? Can we stop with the drama? 
and then just rearrange your room. No, we have to have like this big volcano for the room to get rearranged. Fine. Everybody has a different process. Everybody comes to their joy in different ways. And that was his. And I was like, Bleh. I bought myself new earbuds. I was like, boom, like, if you're going to like freak out, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to give you more fuel to the fire, which is like attention, right? Then we talk about gifted. So you might even have a, somebody here who didn't quite meet the autism category or diagnosis, but they're gifted or vice versa. And so there's some overlap here. There's some overlap here. So there's some, all four of these can kind of mishmash together. So that's why I put those together. Seven, eight, 10, 15. I also will remind you when we go out of order, right? I'll send you guys an announcement. I already have those in there ready to go. Then our last is, um, not last but not least, is our, let's make this one, let's do this one, the purple that you guys said. This one is kind of like um, rare stuff. Now again, the deaf community and the low vision and blindness community, not, not super rare, but because if you think about it, if your grandparents are wearing glasses or have hearing aids, you're headed there, you know? But in this entire class, we're gonna be talking about special needs primarily in the classroom, right? I will apply it to regular life. And if you notice, we have, Holiday here, holiday here. Make sense? And then I talked about taking this one out. So let me, let me do this one. If so I was gonna take this one out, let's do, hmm, I think I just put outline, but maybe I just wanna put the outline in the quiz, yeah. But the quiz is normally on Fridays. So yeah, the quiz is, is easy. So let's do the quiz and take out, and you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, I'll do it opposite. I'll take out the outline. You guys don't have to outline, but you do have to do a quiz. I think that's easier. If you want to outline for your, it's up to you, but let me go back up here. Chapter 12, I want to put here, instead of the outline, I'm going to put the quiz. Chapter 12 quiz. Trust me on this one, it's easier than the outline. <laughs> So again, it's Thanksgiving, you guys might be traveling, do the quiz early, it's not hard. But doing the outline is probably a little bit more work than the quiz, so I'm giving, definitely choosing something easier for you guys. So let me save this, colors and all, and I can, um, I'll update the PDF. Cool, so again, no matter what section you're in, these are the due dates, right? If you're in 6.3 or 6.4, same thing, same thing. So again, this is everything that we got. And so if you, again, look at the end of the unit, you have an exam. The week before you have an assignment that's it and then here's the deal what we're gonna do is have like everything due on this last part right here i have to have the exam at the end and then you'll have portfolio any late work um and then you will still have your chapter you know discussion board and quiz and all, all that kind of stuff so but here's my last thing don't wait i had somebody last semester who um the class ended i will make this yellow the class ended on a Saturday and on Tuesday he was still turning in stuff. I was like, do you understand that the semester is this long, but it's not this long for you? That's an equity issue. That's not okay. I cannot accept work past Saturday. Okay, so let's be cool about that. And you guys remember what Canvas is like on the last day. It gets weird. So, cool. We got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of stuff. But it's a hamster wheel. Kind of just does the same thing every week after this week so this week is no book next week is book but you won't need your quiz a book for a quiz until you get to like friday but then again if that quiz has to be the week after it's okay it's okay it's okay how are we doing on time oh 818 perfect i'm gonna stop right here for questions and then i'm gonna jump on over to canvas questions have, on the so i have one question Good um i remember uh when I had your class like two semesters ago, you would also do like PowerPoints about the chapter. Is that what you mean by read lecture? Yes, yes. Oh. I do have PowerPoints and Prezi's, but last semester Prezi and I kind of broke up for a little bit. And then, <laughs> then they kind of like baked me back and I didn't have it. But then the state of California is suggesting that we drop all PowerPoints and put the information into chunks on a page inside of Canvas. So you would have like a page where it would just like list all the information, which is really just, I take it right from the book. Mm -hmm. So it list the information with like those videos I would show, boom, 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 boom. So I'm kind of in between, do I want to do the chunk? Do I want to chunk it? Or, hmm. 
the PowerPoints are in there, the Prezi's are in there. There, I think there's like four um, chapters that got corrupted, so I will chunk those. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the information will be there. It just may be in a little bit more. The reason why they talk about chunking is that it's mobile friendly. Yeah, yeah. Because mobile, no. not every mobile device can read PowerPoint. Yeah, no, I get you. It's just I, I, I really enjoyed the PowerPoints because it was like colorful and like you can do like a whole bunch of whole things. And like, I'm a visual learner. So like that really helped. I, I, they're all in there. I think there's four that got corrupted that I have to redo. Oh, okay. I have a list. Hold on. Yeah. Two, four, 14, 15. I have to like, I'm going to chuck those. So oh. chapter one's in there. It's super detailed. Like it's all crazy. Yeah. Um, and it follows the book. I did every, like, yeah, every chapter, every outline, you know, every PowerPoint's a little bit more different in the colors and whatnot. Um, oh. But yeah, I am petting the dog. She's being super needy right now. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, when he's chill, she's on me. It's like, dude, seriously. Um, yeah, so uh, absolutely, Genesis. There's always stuff for you because I'm a visual learner too, and I notice it's like, I know, I know not everybody is, but a lot of people are. So that's my first option. But even when I'm recording this, it comes up with an, I, and there's an audio file attached to this as well. So kind of exciting that it, that it does kind of help every, every kind of learner. Yeah. Okay. Any uh, other question? Cool. Thank you. I do. Yes. Jump I have a me. question. I'm also taking your um, introduction to school age, uh, school age care class. Is there a book for that? There is. And you know what? because I just got assigned that class last week. I, I didn't know that the book wasn't connected to web advisor. So let's talk after or put it on, um, put it on canvas. Cause I have it right here, but I don't want I'm off. It. I'm off work tomorrow. So I'm trying to even get all my books like at like one day. Perfect. So I'm off work tomorrow. And then so just wait at the see. end and I'll show you while everybody else is clicking off. Will cool? do. Thank you. No problem. No problem. And it's a small book and it's easy. You're going to be, it's going to be great. Yeah, so again, any of you who are interested in working with um, kindergartners, like the TK, K, and then through like so school age, five through eight, I'm teaching a brand new class called, you know, school age child. So think about this, 120A, ask me after class, and we'll talk more about that. Yeah, it was the first time that class filled in three years, and yeah, it's full now, so I'm excited. I mean, it's not full, full, but it's, I mean, we're doing a really cool project in there where we, the entire class is working as one group to work to create the ideal environment for the school age child. So it's project based, based learning in that class. Very similar format to this, but there's one piece where everybody's gonna work together. And even if you hate group projects, we're gonna, we're gonna rock this one. Can't wait, super excited. Any more questions on the syllabus? So I'm gonna jump over to Canvas. Yes, no, go ahead. You can always, you can always ask me again. Now let me, let me share the screen and show you Canvas. Hopefully it didn't like lock me out. We'll see. Good, good, good. I like your background too, but by the way, Genesis is really cool. I've seen those like tapestries. I was thinking of like putting one over here, still thinking about it. Cause I mean, that's a bookcase, big deal, right? This is my office, but still I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind a tapestry. Yeah. Cause like, I like, I like a lot of colorful things. Cause on this wall, I have like my paintings and, stuff, and like this wall just looked too empty. So I just, that's really cool. I like, and I've seen those on Wish too. There's ones that look like forests and like oh, yeah. the tree of life. I was thinking about the tree of life. That would, that would be a cool one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys all know what your canvas looks like, right? So first thing, some people say, oh, um, it, canvas is not showing up on my da dashboard. Did you drop me? And I was like, no, it's just hiding. So if canvas is not showing you your class that you're enrolled in and mine's a little slow right now. Um, there's a way to go into the thing that says all classes or all courses and star the one that is your current semester and then it brings it to your um, dashboard. And of course it's nice and slow. There we go. And I noticed that Pronto doesn't show up right away and I was like, no, I like Pronto. Where did it go? It's still not there. It'll take a second. Cool. Cool. Okay. Any questions again so far as it's loading? Um, when will, when will our normal class, like, Zoom meetings be, like, every night or every, like, during the day? So, this class doesn't have any Zoom meetings except this one because I added it in. This class is in what? This class is 100% online. No, no, I meant, like, what, what time will we be meeting for class? Like, 6 o'clock or 7? Zero. 
No, I meant like on computer. Like what time will our, what time will classes on Zoom be? You make your own schedule, so you yeah. have your own time so, where you have. Yeah. So this one's new for you, Samantha. There's no required face-to-face -face meetings. There's no recorded. I I try to record meetings, um, but as in terms of a live meeting, there is nothing required. So there is no schedule. However, you know me, I like to be in contact. So, <laughs> so it's gonna, this is gonna be new for you. Like this is kind of like, it's very independent, but at the same time, I wanna make sure I'm supporting you guys. So let's talk after, okay? Good, because if you need to talk with me like we did after class last time, let's talk, we can Zoom. You and me can just have a Zoom, just you and me. Uh, that's okay. for everybody. Yeah, I'm pretty open because this stuff this is so important I want to make sure that you guys are learning it with support, but it's an upper division class. So it's a 200 level class. So there's a piece where you just work at your own pace. You work when you can, right? And we can talk about your schedule and things like that. Like the intro discussion board asked you for like, what is your schedule for the week? When do you study for this class? If you get into a pattern, then it makes everything easier. Good. So I'm just going to click up 6463 just because, and they're both the same. Both of these classes are set up exactly the same, but I'm going to walk you guys through it. I just separated it like that for me just for grading purposes. Um, and if you notice, I have two sections of 107, a 110, and a 120. And so, um, so yeah, you guys, please be patient with Canvas. I think we're <laughs> super overloaded. <laughs> and Zoom too is like blurg. They're hiring too, by the way, because they're... So this is what it looks like for me. <coughs> Anything that has this little eyeball that's crossed out, you guys don't get to see. But you're seeing it now because you're seeing my screen. Now here's your announcements. You guys are pretty comfortable with that. These go into your emails immediately. If you're not getting my emails or announcements, you need to check your emails. And if you're still not getting them, check into Canvas a lot, right? So look at, here's a greeting. Here's like, here's our due dates. And then here's our, if we decide to meet, I would like to, I would like to meet, but I can't make any guarantees. Um, if we decide to meet, again, I'll put it up there. I'll put the link. I'll try to do it. I mean, I'll hold it to like Thursday nights, but I can be flexible um, because I have other classes too that are online too. So I can maybe switch it up depending on what you guys need, but I'll record it and share the, share the recording with you. So there's ways to get what you need, even if you are not going to be in class on the exact same moment or same exact same time. This is called modern learning. You guys can do it. I promise. If I can do it, you can do it. You can do it, I can do it, yeah? So again, here's announcements. Right now, you'll get to see the syllabus and it really is a replication of everything that I have in the handout syllabus. I literally cut and pasted back and forth just to make sure that they were the same. And then I put like a link for the procedures and the expectations, right? Um, so here's your PDF version of the syllabus. Here's your book, okay? Again, Introduction to Contemporary Special Education. It's a good book. Some of it's a little redundant. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes they outline the chapter and then they outline the chapter again. You're like, Bleh. but it kind of keeps our minds organized. So I think it's good. Again, it can be electronic copy. It could be a loose leaf copy. It could be a hard copy. It could be brand new. It could be used. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Good. And then again, this is our activities, assignments, right? And this week, all you guys you get to see is really this, what's going on this week, all the way through Sunday. Okay. So you see how I broke it down into 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Did that on purpose. And this, when it says to do, let me, let me annotate this. When it says to do, that just means read it. There's no due date. Anything that says to do, to do, let me get, let me do this one. Stamp. If it says to do, 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 that means you just read it. And at the bottom, you hit next. It comes off your to-do list. Make sense? Cool. So let me let me take us now into um, let's clear this one. Let me take us all. It's going slow. No, nope, no more stamps. Let's clear my drawings. There we go. Let me take us back to the modules. Okay. And if you guys notice, check this out on the homepage. I learned something kind of cool and fun. I am making hyperlinked buttons. So as the semester progresses, you'll see like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four as a unit. And then it'll take you right there. So you can go through modules on the side. It, it, again, it's up to you however you want to navigate. When I was an online student, I would actually start in my grade sheet or my, my dashboard. 
my to-do list. Oh crap, what's due this week, <laughs> right? Um, and of course, I was a person doing it last minute and there's always a student in there doing it the first day, right? <laughs> and so I was like, Bleh. right? Um, so this start here button, you just click it once and it takes you right to the module, right to the module. And so, and it's going slow, but it's, um, I put that just so it makes everything easy. And then under that will be every chapter button. So I'm trying to make everything more visually connected, um, more predictable, more, a little bit more professional. So now that that takes you right to this, the inside of the module and all these different things, just as you read this stuff, you just go down to the bottom and click next. That's it. And then it's off your to-do list. So all, everything that has a to-do, I left it at so like 1159. Again, there's no, there's no due dates. There's no late dates, whatever. Just read it. This is how I broke it down into like, how good are you at Canvas? If you need extra help, there's these links. I still have people asking me this stuff too. I'm going to say, check this out. There's help. <laughs> Go get it, right? I can help, but trust me, today during my um, class that I lectured for an hour, 15 minutes, I had 28 inbox emails waiting for me. I was like, that's a lot, <laughs> which is not a problem. Cause, you know, I'm willing to do it, right? I'm willing to answer all the emails. But if somebody's asking me in an email, the stuff that's already right here, is that fair? No. Right. So I'm going to keep, keep reiterating, like, I'm here to help you. I'm definitely willing to help you. But did you try to find a solution to your own problem first? And I'll give you guys some options here. Um, so again, so we do this. The next one is get your technology ready. Again, this is little videos on how to update your picture, um, download the Canvas app, download Can uh, Pronto app, things like that. So again, if you're new to Canvas or you're just getting more familiar, getting better at Canvas, this gets everything ready for you, okay? So I'm gonna, it's taking a while to like load. Those are all, those blank spots are just videos. So I'm gonna skip those. And again, I do like the Pronto Chat feature. I will put the hyperlinks in there for the meetings in there. Um, if you guys need to get a hold of me, like I have Pronto on my phone, like, like use it. It's kind of like WhatsApp. But the, the, if you don't if you don't download the app, you have to go into Canvas to open it. So I, I downloaded the Canvas app and the Pronto app separately. So that helps too. So I could be literally at the car wash, which I haven't been in forever, and like text you guys outside of Canvas. It's in Pronto, but it shows up, yeah, in Canvas. So then you know, I put a little greeting and welcome, talked about what we're doing today, what is what we're covering in the class. And then go ahead and read, read through that. Anytime I put a hyperlink, follow that if you need. Yeah. Yvette, I love your flowers. They're so pretty. Do you make those? Do. Yeah. I oh, did. I had them for my 21st birthday and I just hanged them up. I didn't want to throw them away. Yeah, keep those, girl. Those are cute. Thank you. Uh -huh, cool. Um, then this one's all about me. I've told you pretty much everything there is. I did add my teaching philosophy. I'm really tired of like teaching at people. I want to teach with people. Yeah. I want you guys to learn what you need to learn in your way and make it meaningful. I'm really excited about that. Okay. Um, again, I'm not going to read at you, right? Take your time, go through this, but you, or not, you know, just rip through it. Okay. It's up to you. But when somebody says, I didn't know, and that's really code for, I didn't read it. Listen, I got a Peyton who gives me all those shenanigans. I do not need to hear it from you guys. Good. This one about 2.3, that's all my policies. It's all the stuff that's on the syllabus and it's all these, it's, it's a lot. Blah, 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 blah. It's everything, how to pass the class. But guess what? When you take the scavenger hunt, you will be looking through this. Ha uh ha, -huh. my dog is seriously bullying me right now. Every time I put my elbow down, she like licks it. <laughs> She's like, you haven't pet me. Hey, listen, at, at nine o'clock, if you're a good girl, you can come up here and say hi. Yeah, I see you. She got a hose bath today too. So she's like super clean and fluffy. And then I put like a little bit of castor oil on her. So she's like super smooth and fluffy. It's fun. All right. So prep 2.3, this is that title nine piece. And I know my computer's going slow, but please watch these videos. The first one's kind of serious, but it is a serious issue. Um, but the second one is all about, oh, we've, you've probably seen this in my other classes. Maybe um, T consent talks about kind of a more uplifting or a much lighter version of what is consent. And then I did add the consent for kids because I want you guys to see what that looks like in an age appropriate 
an age appropriate video. Very sweet, very sweet. Again, just read through it, watch those videos, click next. <clears throat> and then by the way, there is a quick, like I told you on the scavenger hunt, it's on there. Now here's our first, then we get into four. This is our first thing, it's a discussion board. Now I'm gonna give you guys the tips and tricks that all the rest of my students all week have been figuring out. I mean, some of you have figured it out already. It's a discussion board, but because we're in an online environment, I want a video. Now people go, oh, I don't like video. I don't look like, like what I look like on a video. I don't like how I sound on it. Um, Y'all been doing selfies for years. Y'all been doing TikTok and like Insta story. Come on, no, stop it, okay? Now, if you are so petrified of sharing your face on a video, give me a slide presentation with your voice. I'm fine with that. The point is of this is to number one, get to know each other. Number two, I need to know that you're like ready. Yeah, right? Some people are like, oh yeah, whatever, I'm doing a video, this is me, yo, boom, hashtags 2020. That's not what I asked for, okay? <laughs> There's a little bit of a script here. Again, some hyperlinks, so make sure that you read these things so we know that we're gonna get good quality work. Um, and read through everything first and then hit it. Now, some of you already did it because I nudge people to start it by Wednesday night, which was last night, but that's not an exact due date. That's like a nudge date, right? It's actually due Sunday, but again, that's a target date. So if you turn it in Monday because you're having tech issues, that's fine. So if you've taken a class from me before I made you do like, the Myers-Briggs and the learning, blah, blah. I found something that ties it all together. Instead of doing three or four separate things, <coughs> excuse me, you do one thing and it's beautiful. So click the, click the link. You don't even have to enter your email, answer the questions. It gives you a 25 page report, no joke. And it's pretty accurate. I give it a, a solid 95, man. A good nine out of 10, yeah. So do that first. And then you don't have to print it out. Okay, do you need to go outside? Can you go potty? Can you go potty? Okay, let's go potty. You need to go potty. You need to go potty. Go, eat it. Oh no, she went, she went to the bedroom. She was like, I need a snuggle. There's no bed in this room. <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. So get your personality max. You don't have to print it out, but read through it. See what you think. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it weird? Is it BS? Come on. Like, I will ask it at the end here. Now, some people typed this out and then added a video. That's cool. I think that's great. Um, some people just did the video. Now, really basic. What's your major? This us to get to know you. What's your major? What are you hoping to do? Um, why did you do this class? Like, now, your schedule for the semester. I'm just looking to see if you can actually do the class. I had somebody, I think last semester, I had like three jobs and four kids. And I was like, she literally was on her phone during the class. And I was like, no, I don't know. I don't mean talking or trying, but like she was driving in a car with her phone like that. I was like, no, no. She had, ended up dropping me. She was too busy to take a class. So like, what is your schedule? So you don't have to like show me, you know, if you are going to the dermatologist every third day, I don't, that's cool. You don't have to show me that. But I made like something that looks like this. This is literally posted in my house on the wall. It's my schedule. I'm Peyton's schedule. And yes, I did put Wednesday night's yoga. I will not be answering emails. Then. Okay. And yes, I did put sleep in on the weekend. Yes, I did. Here, let's see. Yes, I did. <laughs> right. Um, so it's things like this. When do you study for this class? Right. And see how I carved out 205 time? Boom. Okay. So, and I'm trying to get to bed earlier, that kind of situation. So you can, if you don't want to like, you don't have to make that kind of chart. You can write it down as a list. You can tell us about it. Oh yeah, I work, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and my study time is from this time to this time, and this, what, you know, just let us know that you can actually have the time for the class. Um, and then where do you study? Now, some people have a moving study target. Now, again, I want to be sensitive to where I have people with alternative living situations. I have people with, you know, who are in transition and if you're like i study in my car that's cool if you don't want to share that information that's fine with me too i'm not gonna like fail you at this assignment if you kind of miss a piece of it it's not the end of the world okay i need to know that you have time to study for this class and you have something that is kind of good for you to focus 
right? You don't have to have a whole room. You could sit at a dinner table. You could sit on the floor. You could sit on your bed. It doesn't matter to me. But if you're sitting on your bed and you have seven kids and 14 cats and you can't concentrate, we got to talk. Okay. <laughs> we got to carve out something a little bit more professional and it, we'll figure it out. Okay. And then the results of your personality match report. Like, what was your four letter result? Right? Are you an ENFJ? Right? And some of you who've taken this before, take it again just to see. See how accurate this is. Um, and let me know if it was the same or different. Your multiple intelligences. What are you good at? This tells me are you good at people? Are you good at art? Are you good at math? Are you good at that kind of stuff? If there's two that are similar, just talk about your top two. Um, learning styles, like we've already talked about, Genesis said visual, right? If you're visual, great. If you're auditory or kinesthetic, put those all together. And then this one adds brain hemispheres. Right or left brain shows like a right brain just means you're like more creative and fluid, and left means that you're very linear, linear and like more structured. Big what? Yeah. So it just kind of gives us insight into you, and people then can connect to that. So on this one, it's respond to two or more peers and be like, hey, I connect with that, or that makes sense, or oh, that's the same major I have, or blah, 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 whatever, that kind of stuff. We keeping it nice and loose, nice and light this week. But at, when it gets into the chapters, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more of a, of a connection. I look for more of a, um, a Socratic or like a Socratic debate, not a debate, but like more collegiate in the questions. Because I know discussion boards are kind of like eye roll worthy when it, everybody's just saying, cute post, thumbs up, super awesome. Like, this is not, this is not an Insta post. This is not Twitter, right? You're not going to like this and thumbs up and winky face and emoticon. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. So this one, this week is just, hey, let's get to know you. Cool. And then here, like, you agree with it? Do you agree with the report? Did you, like, they'll tell you what celebrities that you're like, what things that you're good at, right? And again, yeah, just your response. It's pretty easy. You guys, this is 30 points. I made it big. I made it big. So do I want it good or kind of like, ho oh, hum? Show me what you got. If we're not in the classroom, show me what you got. You can do it. You're in your own home, right? You're in the comfort, your comfort zone. So when you're done at this, like I see there's already responses. I'm just going to go through it. You do have to kind of put yours in first before you can respond to people. Now, tip and trick on this one. <coughs> if you just post a link, a lot of people might not be able to watch it. And if somebody doesn't can't watch it, then they're not going to respond to you. So you might not be feeling super popular. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you hit reply to start re answering and you hit the little record button, you can do a live recording and it just does it. That's what all my students are telling me. Like if I recorded it ahead of time, it wasn't uploading. But if I just recorded it live, it, it worked perfectly. So keep that in mind too. And it, again, if you already posted one, it's not the end of the world. But you might not get responses if somebody has to like, again, I see a dot movie on there. Um, I can open it with VLC movie media player on my PC, but I don't have VLC media player on my phone. Some people do take classes just hundred percent on their phone. Cause that's all I got. So just keep it in mind. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to mark you down, but you might not get a bunch of responses versus seeing an actual video that was live. So the next one is the syllabus scavenger hunt. Super easy. This is 25 points. Now it's only 11 questions, but one of them is, has like matching in there, right? Um, and again, there's no time limit. You could take it as many times as you want. You could take it over the next three weeks. Pretty easy. I'll give you a hint. It's gonna ask you, <laughs> drop, add and drop dates. <laughs> it's gonna ask you where I went to college, <laughs> things like that. Um, it's gonna ask about what is the minimum grade it takes to pass this class with an A. We already know your son's name too, so we got that one already. Yeah, done. see, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's some of these things you actually have to read. And again, you can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's cool. So when you're done with that, you can just hit next. And then the very last one, I'm trying to see if it's even showing up. It's just like a checklist. It's a survey. Are you really ready? And it's just like, did you get your book? Yes or no? And if you put no, because it's coming in the mail, it doesn't fail you. It's just a survey. And it's like, again, take it as many times as you want. This is the last thing I didn't show you. We have new tech help on campus. And it's peer-to-peer. -peer. 
meaning they're students, SCSU students who can help you with all this stuff. So I put the link here, I put the email, here's the phone number. Again, here's the link, here's the email, here's the phone number. Let them help you. So when you ask me, I'm having trouble uploading my video, I'm gonna say two things. Number one, there's a discussion board that says general course questions, ask each other there. You can even put it in pronto. Like you can do that. You could put an, e you could do a Katie email and email everybody in the class. That's cool, do that. Because chances are somebody's figured it out and I can tell you, but what if I don't, what if I, I miss that window and I'm answering somebody else? Yeah, right now. So there's a discussion board, there's pronto, there's email. You can like tap in with a friend. You can also ask these people, right? Make sense? I am techie, but I'm not your tech support. So I want to be supportive and I want to be helpful, but I, you might see some of my responses that says something like, what have you tried already? What is your possible solution? <laughs> right? Because I want you to start problem solving a little bit before you come to somebody giving you an answer, right? It's called adulting. Yeah. And we're slowly getting there, right? And if you do have the answer, help other people on that discussion board. Yeah. Make sense? So please do that. That's how another way that I determine uh, or help boost like um, participation grade. If you're actually participating and helping people, things like that. Cool. Whew. Last one is, let me go past here. Last one is this. That one was supposed to be up there a little bit more, but showed up here, I think, because I put the due date, the to-do list a little bit later. Here's the last piece, the survey. And we are right on track. It's beautiful. Um, the survey is really just like a checklist. And it's not, it's zero points, but again, it's more like participation. So with the quiz and with the discussion board, that's 55 points. This is like, hey, did you watch the Title IX video? Right, <laughs> that kind of situation. Did you update your profile picture? It's just really like a yes or no to do check, 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 check. And that's it, you guys, for the week. There's no book work reading requirement. There's no outline due. There's no chapter quiz due, nothing. So all you can see is this kind of stuff and the rest of the stuff I get to populate later. Yeah, good. And then grades also is a good way to look at what to do and when. But over here on your to-do list, your, um, like usually right here, let's see, go, let's go to home. Right here is like your to-do list usually. And um, it might check off all mine because I just went through next, went through all of them and hit next. Um, if you're on in one side of one course, it'll tell you what's to do in that one course. If you're on your dashboard, it'll tell you what's to do in every class. So again, sometimes it's easy for you to focus down in one course. So right here, it tells me right here, these are everybody who's posted already and I need to go back and read those and grade those. Yeah, see, this is my to-do list for this class. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and then don't forget that over here in the syllabus, when you click syllabus, you also get this course calendar. So if I click syllabus or this calendar, I will get due dates. So I'll, I'll hit syllabus. Again, this is the description of the syllabus. This is where the PDF of the syllabus is. The due dates are down at the bottom. As I start unleashing things or unrolling, rolling out things, you'll see more due dates. It's kind of a, a list of everything for the whole class, but use the calendar feature, because I do. I love it. <clears throat> and it tells you right here, this is the day that we're on the 27th. In a second, it'll, when that graphic pops up, it'll start being gray over here in the syllabus. Syllabus means that the gray stuff is like to do or due dates. So looking ahead next week, we have a Wednesday, a Friday, right? You see what I'm saying? Right? So also here, when you click the calendar on this side, it matches the color that you set up for the class. So for these, for 205, I usually set up red or dark red. And then your calendar will show color coded based on the class. So like 120, I made yellow and 110, I make blue and 107, I make green. Um, that's just how my brain works, right? So for our class, see this one is checked off as a blue class. So it's 110, so you're only gonna see 110 stuff. So if I click off of that and it'll go down to 205, taking a second. Then it'll show me all the red stuff in a sec. See, for 205. Let me show you what 120 looks like. This should be yellow or orange. So it, it stacks both your classes based on color. So you can click off of put them all on there, 
take them all off, or it's up to you. Make sense? By color. So use a calendar feature. I, I don't know if it uh, connects to iCal. I thought it used to. <coughs> I actually was able to figure out how you can do that. If you go to over to calendar feed, yeah, um, it gives you a link and you can open the link and it'll update everything and put it into your Google Calendar or iCal, I believe. That so, is amazing. Would, that is amazing. Thank you, Jennifer, for telling me that. I've never really gone down that rabbit hole, but the downside is if let's say I have something that's on a Thursday and I just like click and I drag it over to a Friday, it will give you guys all an update. So just be aware of that. And not in a bad way, but under your settings, I put that in, in one of the things to do is your settings. If you get, if you want all the settings, all the notifications, you may get too many. So just be aware of that. Because if I go, oops, it's on this Friday. Wait, wait, no, let's move it to this Friday. Right? You're going to get like, this due date has changed. Wait, this due date has changed. <laughs> so mate, this is what I tell people. Um, look at your settings and keep them kind of small, like just give me announcements and whatnot and give me like a week or two to get everything nice and tight and set up and then open those notifications, right? But anytime I change a due date, I will let you guys know and I never make it earlier. I always push it back to be later. I'm always fair and equitable and help you guys out versus get stuck to a calendar. You follow what I'm saying? Good. So you guys pretty comfortable with this? guys getting like now that some of you have taken me before and some of you are kind of yes. getting yeah it's like that's why 107 and 110 like I really push this um this pattern so it's like when you get into the other division classes you don't have to worry about the pattern and the canvas so much but then you can really look at the content what is what is the um what does the autism spectrum disorder really mean right what is it why what do you mean of the spectrum right so there's a lot of different things and look at here's now here's my to-do list for the whole for all my classes so it's every single thing so it's up to you guys if you like to keep it simple by class or keep it like global by all your classes yeah we have choices we have choices and my goal is to make everything pretty consistent but please be flexible with me i will forget things here and there i give myself a good solid a but an a doesn't have to be 99 percent. could be an 89.5 in this class <laughs> I mean, nobody's perfect, right? But I strive to do a really good job. I try. Some days are better than others, just like everybody else. <laughs> so good. Before I let monster, I mean child in. <laughs> uh, uh not yet. I did not invite you yet. Nope, I did not invite you yet. It's just like stop. Okay, then eat pizza. You have about five minutes. If you're quiet, you can earn it. He's definitely in that, like, I'm 13 and I know everything and you're not the boss of me. She can't tell me what to do. And I'm like, well, in fact, I am the boss of you. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I'm telling you, for those of you who have taken 107 Child Development, he is like that unit in Teenagers. He's like all of it. He's got pimples. Totally. He's like so hormonal. He's crabby. He's like impulsive. He thinks he's invincible. It's like, oh my God, you are every course term. And like, <laughs> just like, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that's the best part about being a human development person is like, <laughs> right? I tried to talk to him today about how puberty is, your body is changing. And then now that me and dad are getting older, our body's kind of reverting. It's kind of reversed puberty. And he's like, is your voice going to get higher? <laughs> Is daddy going to get boobs? <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. I gotta love it. <laughs> okay, so questions. Welcome to the insanity. I mean, this is really the crossover between work and school and life and home. It's like, you can still learn inside of each other's homes. But here's the thing. It's, it's the, yeah, again, it's the new crossover between school and work. And I think it's great. I think it's great. This is how reality is going to be from now on. Again, places like Twitter said that they will never have a how uh, uh, an office for their employees ever again. They're all going to be work from home. Think of the energy that saves, right? Things like that, or not printing stuff out. I can't even tell you the amount of things I would have been printed out this week. That the gas. I mean, I don't live far from the campus, but 
How about the wear and tear on my clothes? Or how about I didn't have to really, I mean, I'm wearing my old clothes, big whoop. You know, I didn't have to like go school shopping for any of us. It's, it's, it's been, what about school supplies? I spent a hundred bucks twice a year on this guy in school supplies. Right? And so, and, and there's, you know, and there's a trickle effect to all that stuff. Like Target's pretty mad that I haven't spent a hundred bucks there, but you know, I think Target's gonna make it-ish, right? <clears throat> okay, good, questions. Concerns, um, comments, jump in. Uh, I have a question about the teacher interview. Uh, sorry yes. if you already talked about it, I, I came in late. It's all good, it's all good. Um, can, can I like ask what that is? Yeah, um, what you may have missed is that, um, kind of going back and forth on that one, I think it's important to do it but I usually make people go out and find a teacher and I think that's hard to do right now. Mm -hmm. So I have friends who are willing to do like an interview and I would give you guys the two videos of the interview and you guys would kind of yeah. do a write-up on that. Does that make sense? Kind of, yes. Okay, what else, what other questions you might have? Oh, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, so I, you know what I do for when I have assignments when I write them up and I put them together, I'm trying to do a video for each one. So I say, this is how you do it, right? Because again, we're visual. Um, but also I am really good about saying, this is it, it, I'm giving you a few weeks, here it is. There's a few weeks to do it. Um, I'm trying to like be very realistic about it because normally in this class, I would say, go do an observation. It's not gonna happen, but we're gonna do a movie. It's not the best thing, but we can do it. We can kind of get the same skills without doing an observation. And it's not ideal, but that's what, we're, that's what we got right now. So I'm really looking at what's the best, what's the best way to um, learn in this class given our present circumstances. Okay, thank you. Of course, of course. So flexibility is the key is what I'm asking for all of us. Yeah, good. Okay, what do I have in the chat room? Oh, Those are my super quiet people who are like, I don't wanna hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna just made me yawn. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nanny. Oh, I have good. to leave the house at it's 6 time. 30. It's I was time. watching you on here. I'm like, no. oh, I'm like, she's yawning. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it's, that it's time. It's time. We need to get it, We've been sitting here for two hours. We need to It get really it. is a contagion. Like, you yeah. see some yawn. It's like, oh, you're yawning. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> also, but you know what? Also, um, we don't breathe right all the time, especially when we're sitting for a long amount of time and stuff like that. True. <laughs> So, any more questions before I call the monster in? I mean, the child. I have a question. Yes, jump in. Anna. All right. So, um, are you going to share the revamped version of the syllabus on Canvas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just saved it. So, I just have to, like, make another PDF and update sure. it. Sure. All right. Cool. Good? Yeah. And I'm going to do that for both classes. Yeah. Cool. Hold on. Wait a minute. Are you using your words? What did you say? Yes, you may. Okay, so listen, don't show them your food because that's kind of rude. Just put it down. And hey. Hello. Hey, listen, calm down. Let me get you, let me get you a, an actual, like, the gallery. Hi, Peyton. Hold on. Well, how do you know? Who knows my name? Don't push me off the chair. Hi. I'm going to try to make it big. Hold on. Wait, Cohen? Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to make it kind of big. So wait, you want to see? Oh wait, you're pushing me off the chair, buddy. Wait, who said my name? Who said my I, name? I did. I remember you. Hi. What do you want to say to the class that a lot of people are uh, new? Twee. Oh, <laughs> you remember Twee? You remember Twee? Okay, don't yell in my ear, buddy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I missed you, Twee. Yeah, me too. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Show them the sides of your hair before wow. it goes out. <laughs> this is a lightning bolt that goes into a wave that I was gonna ride on my Ooh, look at that. Some, yeah, some, I, already, I already told him I gave away your shirt for Some you. person. Sure did. <laughs> Don't oh, call your mother. And, uh, some, some perfect, some person, person gave away your surfboard because <laughs> you had it under the wrong circumstances. Yes, I did. <laughs> and, and now you need to earn allowance to buy your own surfboard. But I, but Stop that is squeezing my, me. But that is my Look at, there's a dude in here, too. Okay. Isn't that cool? And Ali, oh, hi. Ali Waffle. <laughs> is that, is, did I mispronounce it? Brandy <laughs> Savage? Who's, but who's right there? Somebody's next to you. 
Wait, this is Remy. Oh, there's there's somebody. Oh. There. Uh. Hi, you want to say yes? We can even say hi to Manal and Deborah. Even I like Manal your hair, Manal, Paige. Manal, it looks really good. Deborah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is, um, so again, if you guys are wondering why I look so tired, this is why. <laughs> hey, listen, real quick, buddy. Hey, Peyton, listen, before you get off, sit down real quick. Can you, hey, Peyton, get your feet off of me, please. All the way down. <laughs> I want you to say three things. Hi, my name is Peyton. I am, Hi, my name is Peyton. I am 13. I am 13 years old, soon to be 13 and a half tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love dogs. Mm -hmm. And I go to what school? New Vista School in Laguna Hills, California on Mill Creek Drive mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. <clears throat> and we are a whole 90 pounds. We are a whole 90 pounds and <laughs> for new people. <laughs> Welcome to my mommy's house. Oh. Okay, good. Okay, all done. Go eat your pizza. Go now. Okay, watch this, watch this. I want to see him go fast. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Ew. Ew, go wipe it off. Ew. Go suck at me. Go. Bye, Peyton. Bye, Mrs. Peyton. Bye. 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 <laughs> Wait, what did he call me? Mrs. Knutson. He called me Miss Knutson? <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> like, seriously, like, honestly, there's so much learning that comes with having a kid like Wait. this, but at the same time, there's no way you could predict, like... He actually like, pronounced the last name right. I'm so, like, shocked. He actually said Knutson. He didn't say Knutson. Wow. <laughs> He's a handful. He's a handful and a half. But you know what, honestly, like, this okay. is the reality of the situation. If you guys are going to be teachers, you're going to have a kid in your class who maybe is not even identified with special needs, but is like, is like in the back of your head, like, what is up with this kid? <laughs> and yeah, there's going to be kids yeah. who don't quite fit the criteria, but you mm -hmm. still have to provide inclusion, full inclusion, and not just like sort of inclusion. So we'll talk about kids who are kind of stuck in the middle or kids who have more than one disorder. And there's a lot. There's a lot, but even if you say, I don't want to be a special needs teacher, I just want to work with the normal kids. <laughs> First of all, what's normal. Secondly, even a high performing child can have a meltdown, right? Or have a bad day or not cope with getting a B on a test. So all these skills that you guys are going to learn in this class apply to every situation, even if it's not even kids. <clears throat> looking how to consider a person's differences, even an adult. I think our society has a bias that, again, you'll hear me say this many, many times, that if a person is in a wheelchair, then their head must be in a wheelchair. Like if, they're in a, if their body's not great, then their mind isn't great. And that is not true. Or vice versa, somebody who looks really good and maybe is attractive and has a great figure and a great body and a great car and whatnot, and they are mentally unstable. So we need to start checking ourselves and what our eyes tell us and really start looking at what is ability or disability or differences. And so I, I really, really enjoy this class. Again, I push it for the actual educational environment because a lot of you are going to be teachers, but I also kind of scope it out to real life. I think we all need a little boost of consideration. Yeah. Cool. So that's my job. That's my personal goal is to get you guys learning about what's in the book, but then expand it a little bit to reality because that's life now. That's life now. Yeah. So good. It was great meeting you all. You guys have any more questions? You're welcome to go in and be specific with your time. It's 9.03. You're welcome to click off. Awesome. Ask me any questions at any time. Canvas inbox is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, let me see if I can help you. Really hoping to get to know you guys more over the semester. And um, yeah, just let's bring it. Let's do this. We got it. We're going to do it. Any questions? I'll stay around for a little bit. But if you do, if you need to go, you're welcome to go. It was nice to meet you. Have yeah, you likewise, yeah. Ulysses. It's great to have you here. Nice to I like, meet you. I like getting to see everybody's bedroom and whatnot, or office room. <laughs> Jenna, you like RA 
book hound. I love it. My mom is a second grade teacher, so these are mostly all of her books. But I like to say that they were mine. She bought them for me for when it's I was hard. Little, so. You know, it's hard. <laughs> mine. The, it's hard to go 100% digital. It's hard to like pass on books. It's hard. It's, I mean, I like, you're seeing that, but like, I have like stacks like, here, like stacks. Because once you start going, especially the hardcover ones are so, I gotta show you, I have first edition sitting up here, ones that I just like open just to smell. Like, books are just this beautiful piece of art still to this very day. I can't, can't get over it. So tell her I love her books too. Yeah, well, it's so funny because I'm sitting here and it's taking all of my energy to not just pull a book down and just like flip through all of the pages. <laughs> I know, they're so, then they're nostalgic. Yeah. They're nostalgic. Yeah. They I'm really sure are. There's really good classic ones in there. Oh yeah, when people, every once in a while, like there's a moment where I'll go to the thrift store and then I'm just like, and I like, why do I have all these books? You know, like, and I have like over here in my bookcase over in one of these little sections, maybe right behind my little painting is I have like a banned book section. I have like Siddhartha and Fahrenheit 51 and Jonathan Livingston. I have like, you know, I have like the banned book section that I wasn't allowed to read and they were, you know, thrown into fire pits and I'm like, no, I own them now. It's like... Yeah, I, I'm trying not to go overdo it, but I have like books across the window. Like, there's a moment where I love them, but they will swallow me whole if I allow them to. So I kind of do. Yeah, there's also a, a whole closet over here that's full of manipulatives and puzzles and my all of the things. Yeah, my mom has been a teacher. Let's see, I'm 28 for 30 years now, so she has collected all of the things and you know what if she's got the space more power to her it's organized that's why I tell people it's not hoarding if it's organized exactly and she uh-huh. she has I don't know you, can, you probably can't see it over here but she has little pieces of construction paper with the different Naturally. um yeah the different these are Halloween these are about the ocean these are about this you know she is like super organized it's slightly ridiculous because I feel bad taking anything out of out of place <laughs> I tell people I tell people like you know I'm not as organized as I would like to be but um at the ready is the label maker have a separate one on campus with a label on the back side that says for use with permission and here's my number call me if you need to use it no joke I'm telling you, I've been filing all semester. I went to the campus, res- rescued stuff. And, and nobody's seen really my office on campus. It's right near U99, but it's got bookcases like that. Because I, I have. It, you have seen my office. I've inherited books like that. So I do have a place on campus that has like post-its and I'm starting to do it. And it's like, okay, yeah. I love being a, te- I love being a teacher. There's just a space commitment with it. You gotta have the space. <laughs> and these teachers right now who are like um you know either working from home or I have a couple friends who actually can lecture from the classroom they are still getting this thing where it's like you need to move classrooms how do you move that many books right there's a weird thing and mm-hmm. it's like it's a cultural piece we have to have space and we have to have manipulatives and we have to have stuff I think it's great keep it up tell her always keep that up and by the way, I told her that when she retires in the next couple of years, this is all. I was going to say, you're going to inherit all that, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> and I have like some good classics. Wait, where's my good one? Hold on. Oh, this one. <laughs> this, is, this is the one um, that we've been discussing in my house lately. Um. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Um, it's totally from the seventies, <laughs> and it's all wow. about it's all about puberty and stuff. Oh my god, it's so funny! Check this out. Your, I'm sure your mom has it. Well, without, maybe not with second and third graders, but it's like. <clears throat> I wish we had that kind of book for Dylan because when he went through all of that puberty stuff, he didn't understand what was going on and everything. That's really cool. Estrogen and testosterone dance. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
and the one that about- I had was the American Girl version of it. So that was like from the nineties. Yeah, pretty much. It's that kind of situation. And all bodies come in all different shapes and sizes. Mm. Yeah, and so it's like, and it's it's Mr. Sperm. It's kind of got like some schoolhouse rock vibes going on. A it little is. Bit. It is. It gets a little bit more racy, but um, yeah. He, but listen, Caitlin, I know that you wished you had it, but he has it, and he hasn't gotten it. <laughs> I was just telling you, Caitlin, like, like I've gone over the book. He still doesn't get it. So books are only one piece of the puzzle we're still putting that puzzle together so yes great meeting you guys if you have any more questions jump on in um just, about like the teacher like interview assignment or whatever could it also be like a aid like could you like well, interview an aid instead of a teacher let me think about that because i'm looking for some technical questions like we will learn about response to intervention. Like how do you know when you're helping a student and how do you know it's actually working? And so sometimes the aides are told what to do versus plan that out. So let me think about that, but that's a good question. And if you gotta go, you can, gotta go. But great talking with you, Jenna. Thank you so much for, I have, I have book envy now. <laughs> I have a question actually about yes, um, Kayton. Okay. Um, when was he actually diagnosed with autism? Um, actually, he came to it really differently. Um, the okay. short story is, is that he was diagnosed with ADHD at four. So okay. At four, that was pretty clear. That came as like, so, you know, four-year-olds are hyper. And then there's like this guy. Um, and then his autism features were always present. He was delayed. He was born at three pounds. We adopted him in that. Yeah. He was most likely drug exposed. So okay. I, the only reason I ask is, um, my son is diagnosed with autism. He was diagnosed, um, through, um, our insurance at two. Mm-hmm. Um, Typical. that's about when it happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're going through, um, Tri-County. So he's going to be diagnosed, get for his ID, IEP at, th- um, right before three. Yeah. Good. Um, so, but it was just funny because my husband was actually watching the video as well. And when Peyton came in, it it's like to a T, my son, like with him, like crawling on your back and everything. I just, yeah, you like see it every a mile time away, I, huh? You see it a mile yes, away. Yeah. So, um, whenever I have to, because right now we're doing all of his like ABA therapies, his OT therapy, speech therapy, everything is online um, through different services. But um, I just feel like a human jungle gym. Like he's just like all over me while doing the services. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I'm like, well, that's what I, I wish I could tell you. Too that between the ages of two and 13, it changes, but (laughs) to answer your first question, actually, we struggled with getting his diagnosis for autism because of the drug exposure. Right. There's pieces where, um, where a lot of kids are nonverbal and when they're super young or they, it takes a long time for the verbal, he was Mm -hmm. hyperverbal. And so that kind of threw a lot of people that were like, but he's so verbal, but I'm like, listen, but listen, to how he's processing the information. Yes. Um, and so his is more of an echoic or a verbal stim versus, and so some people said, oh yeah, Tourette's. It, it, it took a long time. So anyways, we got the diagnosis of um, atypical high functioning autism at eight. Oh, okay. Eight. Mm-hmm. So up to that, it was kind of like, but he was seeing an autism specialist, but she was just like, I'm not sure if I want to diagnose him. And finally, I just said, look, I brought her data. I did the whole thing. She's like, and she literally said, this is Kaiser. Yeah, that's who I have as well. And she said, she's like, you know what? You're right. I give up. I will give him the diagnosis. And he's in the Mm. room. He goes, what do you mean give up? (laughs) And she goes, you're right. I shouldn't have said that. And I was like, yeah, listen, she's not terrible, but, um, and I understand at that point, autism looked a certain way. And now autism, autism is more of a spectrum. And right. so you're right. And so it's, it's this thing where it's like, you meet one kid with autism, you meet, you've met one kid with autism. So I, I, I mean, that thing that I talked about earlier, where our eyes play tricks on us. I can't even tell you how many times like people tell me, but he looks so normal. Mm. That's what autism, yeah. autism, they look normal, but yeah. It's... And depending on my mood, I, they might get a really snarky answer back. Okay. Cause I've been known to say, so do you. Um, yeah. but that's not really friendly. So I try not to do that. Yeah. It's just how, how they like, process. What does normal the look like? Yeah. 
So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a journey, but I, you know what? Good for you, Brandy, that you've got supports in place really early because I was fighting for it. I was fighting yeah. for it. Well, we fought for it with, um, we had different insurance before when he was born and, um, but, and then we switched to Kaiser, but, um, I'm actually a preschool teacher. I've been oh. for a long time. I already have my child development degree. Um, yeah. so I knew because I've worked with the younger kids, like infants, you see, you see it coming. right? So I knew like from early on that he had a speech delay and I fought with the doc, the pediatrician and fought with them and fought with them and kept saying, let me guess. He, Oh, he's probably going to be just fine. He'll catch right up. He, you yep, know, let's exactly. talk about it in six months. And you're like, yep. yeah. And as soon as I went to Kaiser, they put in a referral. We went to the, you know, had him evaluated and they're like, oh yeah, he needs speech therapy. And so since 18 months on, he's been in speech therapy. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm telling you again, if had Peyton been nonverbal or less verbal, he probably would have got services quicker. Oh, he didn't, he only said like, he said maybe two words at 12 months. Yeah, it was, I was like, what do you mean? Like, no, I know. <laughs> and so Peyton has a pragmatic deficit, meaning like you could ask him a question, he can give you a answer, but it is not an answer. It is some version of an answer, but it's not Got the it. answer. And at mm -hmm. the same time, he'll be like, oh, you have gold flecks in your eyes. What kind of dog do you have? Do you know the cubic centimeters of your engine? And then people go like, well, he seems normal. I, listen, he never answered your question. Right. So his academics are in a 97 percentile. His pragmatics are in a third percentile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's like my son. So he, I mean, obviously we haven't gotten to that point yet. We're talking about lots of kids, buddy. Yeah. Um, because of him not being in school yet. But um, like when we're doing therapies, I, I tell them like if, cause they're amazed that when we're, when he's playing with something that he's interested in, like right now he's obsessed with trains and sure. it's just like, if he's playing with trains, he'll play with it the whole I'm hour. Obsessed session. With motors. And okay, um, go now. it's Brandy's turn. It's Brandy's turn. But, Brandy's um, turn. but if it's something that they want to do and he's not interested in, he'll, it's two seconds flat. He's done. It's like, he has no attention span for it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. Uh, by the way, just to get into the conversation, my brother's autistic, so that's how I kind of get in this whole thing. And my I want to speak for you, Caitlin. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, my brother was the same way when he was little. All he wanted to do was play with just one thing, and he's still that way. He loves cars. He won't play with anything else. Mm -hmm. Same way. Yeah, and it's and there's mm -hmm. and it's an interesting thing. And honestly, there's been a silver lining for this piece. I know education's not great right now, but when we have kids who are in less um, social situations, they had to learn how to type more. We're seeing different sort of communication skills build in this community versus maybe not verbal, but there's there's different kind of like good and bad that came with all this. It's kind of interesting, honestly, This the technology where the rest of us had to keep up with the technology, these kids and their brain is like that. So I see this as a bonus for them that we all had to stop and they caught up and they excelled in a lot of ways. Um, but there's definitely a, a gift of the autistic, of the autism community. And I'm, to me, this is kind of covering those bases. It's kind of crisscrossing the theory versus practice. I'm really excited. I'm glad that you're here. I always gravitate. I always like tend to get people who get it like Caitlin and everybody's had some sort of exposure. But yeah, please share your story at any time because there's a lot to learn and Peyton's only one type of kid, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's yeah. different. Like I was going to say, like if we were like, say like meeting like on a weekly basis, you know, Dylan would be more than willing to kind of just kind of expose himself and whatnot, you know? It's, it's interesting because again, you know, what is normal? What is not normal? And their skills and gifts that this kid has and all these, these unique children have that that are kind of filling in the gaps of the rest of us. Like he is, he has so many sensory pieces to him that it kind of makes me more aware of certain things. Like it made me realize that, um, I have a lot of sensory issues too. And yes, he's not my, I didn't biology birth the child, but I can see through his eyes, what's going to be bothered, what's going to bother him, what he's going to like, he, what he's going to get irritated with. And then I go, well, you know what? that it would irritate me too. And that might irritate somebody else in this environment. And it helps for me to remember 
I'm not saying that I'm not empathetic, but it helps me through his eyes that there are things that are invisible that are just going to set somebody off. And I don't care if you are a typically developed person or a person on the spectrum, but I mean, how many times have, has the tag in your shirt irritated you so bad you got to get a scissors in there or ew, your, your food touched and that's not going to work for me right now. <laughs> or I can't wear that around my um, wrist or the, I'm going to drive. It's going to drive me crazy. So yeah, Samantha, jump in. Brandy, can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, does your son like, um, like, like, like having to be um, hugged? Yes, he does. He loves, he loves, he's like on like, yeah, 24 seven. Yeah, um, like, oops. Sorry. Cause my, my boyfriend, um, Alex, Playing you remember Alec, right? So apparently he is um he's like a little bit autistic. Sometimes is he's like when I hug him, just like like rarely sometimes I'm like, hey Alec, and he's like, hey, I'm like Yeah, that's hey. sensory processing. That's mm -hmm. sensory processing. And I could tell even for me, when my anxiety is really high, do not touch me. Yep, I'm the same way. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, there's a pain. Yeah, Everybody's got personal spaces and boundaries and sensory needs. Peyton has a squish me, squish me hard. Yes. I lay on him. We, we lay back to back. I lay my entire weight on him, and he's on the bed face down, and he's like, more. <laughs> so my he, son yeah. always has to be, even like we can't, we've tried, we're still trying to get him to sleep through the night in his own bed and he like a foot has to be touching us or something has to be touching us. All and that's, like, and that's a sensory sleep. piece too. That's a sensory mm -hmm. piece too. It's hard. It's hard because then now you don't get your sleep. Trust me, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> Yeah, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll share some supports across the, and, and you know what, again, I do populate a lot of Peyton stories. And so, and then I like to see different aspects. I like to see different inputs because Peyton's only one of them, you know, and they're all unique, but he's, ugh, right now he's so 13. It's driving me hard. <laughs> so yeah. lovable, but man, oh man. Yeah, that's one thing about Dylan is that, you know, he's a very lovable, sweet kid, but yeah, he has some ADHD, but I mean, not nearly to the level of pain. Yeah. And you've seen him before, Caitlin. That's pretty consistent, huh? He's like, just like, pfft. yeah, his meds are kind of pretty much worn off at this time of night, you know, and then he does take that thing where he was kind of dozing off on my shoulder. He does take a sublingual melatonin that does kind of work in like 30 minutes. So he kind of, he will kind of blah, you know, and so um, but then again, it makes him dream very vividly. So he talks a lot in his sleep. So he's, when he sleeps, he looks yes. like a beautiful I angel, but he never shuts off. Never, ever. <laughs> That's exactly my son. We, he, uh, if I don't, he has, takes melatonin every night. Yep. If he doesn't, he would be up until 11 o'clock at night before yeah. he finally, he will just, until he crashes. Yeah. He goes, goes, goes. But dad has ADHD, so that doesn't help either. <laughs> no, and, and you know, it, it's all a little, it's all a little bit different. I think my husband has it too, but again, we don't have a biological connection. It's right. just, to me, it's environmental that, you know, we all, I have sensory issues and daddy's like, huh, what? You know, so it's like, there's this thing where it's like, you know, life is what life is, you know, and I, I say life imitates art or, you know, I tell people I came to this career, um, before I adopted him, but at the same time, isn't it ironic I can't even imagine him in a different family or with his birth family. I have no idea how, I have no idea. I have no idea. And I'm not saying that I'm like perfect person for him, but holy cow, being his mother has made me a better clinician and being a clinician has made me a better mother. It's, it's, you can't untie those two, but it's, it's a lot. And that's, I mean, we adopt, we wanted to adopt two or more, but we knew, we knew at like two, two of, that we we're done. Because it takes two of us full time. I mean, my husband's not working and he's still like, I need a break. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but at the same time, I'm working. So there's this weird kind of like shift. In fact, I'll make sure when I, the class is over, I'll make sure that he's actually kind of asleep. See if my husband hasn't passed out in front of the TV or if he needs to go like clear his head in the car. Like there's this, you know, it's, it's um, the shell game and spinning plates and hurting cats and then 
my dog's harassing me. You know, it's that thing. It's <laughs> modern motherhood, really. <laughs> I just have a borrowed child. I tell people I'm the ultimate recycler, right? I have a recycled husband, previously on husband, previously on car, previously on child, previously on dog, <laughs> previously on the house. Like, might as well, right? Repurpose instead of repurchase. <sighs> okay, so any other questions? Great meeting you guys. Good to see you, Alejandra. Yeah, she put on her lipstick for us too. <laughs> Why not? Listen, I'm telling you, over the summer, there was times I didn't even walk out of that front or back door for like four days. And I was like, mm, I do have makeup on. I did curl my hair. I was like, I, I'm wearing shoes. Pants. It's nice. I'm like, I'm in my classroom. <laughs> I'm wearing pajamas. I'm in my it's all good. As long as you guys are clothed, feet. I'm okay. <laughs> like, Courtney, do you have something? Jump in. Yeah, um, I just have like a quick question. It might like help other people too, but I tried to look during class when you said like you wanted us to like try and help ourselves before you answer the question. Thank you. But th that's a part of adulting, right? Yeah. So I tried to look um, at how to do like the chat stuff because um, I know how you said you wanted us to like risk or email you or just like text you in Canvas and stuff. So um, how do you send messages and stuff? Without so in it prompt, in pronto, like just um, pronto or just like regular in Canvas, like if you could do. Oh, the, like if you want to email me. Yeah. Or see like, my screen. Yeah, or like somebody like. In, All right. So over here in the inbox, do you see it? Um, I think your screen is like, um, you like pinned yourself. Hold on. Yeah. You see my Canvas now? Uh, not yet. All right, I see it, but I'm like trying to figure out how to. So way yeah. over, so I'm gonna point this way because I think we're opposite. So you should have a green bar if it says Rancho Santiago with the little. Yeah, I can see the, the whole canvas thing now. I fixed it. Okay, cool. So down here, yeah, it's going slow. Down where it says inbox, click it once. And you'll see people who email me, but you won't see the content, but um, you click it once and then you can search by class. So if you're taking more than one class, oh, it's so slow right now. It's all nine o'clock. It's all. <laughs> um, you can search by class, and like, um, if you're not real careful, you will email the whole class. So just yeah. be aware of that. I was trying to help. Um, I don't know who, but I was trying to help somebody, and then like I went in and I said child development, and then I said their name, but it like went to everybody. I don't know if like everybody saw it, but I like want to stop doing that. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? I'm not sure if it's gonna let me do it right now. It's getting really crabby with me, and I don't blame it because it is so crabby. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let me. Yeah, I'm gonna show. Um, yeah, it's yeah. We're like falling asleep <laughs> yeah no it's you know what let's do this i'm gonna play around with it um do you know how to email just me yeah okay so do that do me a favor and just give me like three bullets this is what i'm how do i do this how do i do that and then well i'll okay. see if i can do that okay i'm uh, also i also didn't even talk to you guys about the studio feature it's a quick little video snippet so i'm trying to learn how to do that but here's the thing again if it's not closed caption i'm not posted to everybody um holy cow my computer just did a lot of weird stuff i saw that too <laughs> <laughs> so if it's just a quick like Courtney, if i do like a quick little video i can send it to like one person at a time so like okay. i'll try to see if i can give me like an idea of what you're looking at and then like questions and then i'm my, i don't know i'm, my, I'm okay. still playing around with stuff because like i don't know anybody else from the class can like intervene but like i sent a message earlier because uh somebody was asking like oh how do i get into the syllabus how do i do zoom and i sent a message did everybody see my name is courtney by the way did everyone see like oh courtney sent a message in canvas no i, I can't it's not gonna let me see it right now but maybe everybody else can see it okay hey, Ethan, listen I just want to see if i like oh, sending it to one person because that was like my intent because i have I'm other classes. My hair, bro. thank you Okay, are you getting all snuggly? Yeah. Answer my Aww. question. Okay, so it's 9.30, guess what? Guess what, Good. guess what time? What are you supposed to be doing right now? Good time. Okay, say one last thing and get yeah, up and no. beat it. I, he does that all the time. Okay, go. And can you wear pajamas tonight, please, instead of your school clothes? No. Well, that was honest. 
Um, and nice. then I, how is his guitar playing going? Okay, so so he's doing good on the guitar, but the electric guitar has limits because it is loud and I cannot hear. I can't hear like one more smoke on the water riff or whatever. Seriously. <laughs> And like, yeah, they're starting to decompensate. So I'm going to have to run. It's 930, you guys. If there's any other questions, put it in the, um, in the Canvas inbox. And then I do, like, Fridays are my work day. So I, we can chat back and forth or we can even do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom or whatever. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it going. But I got to go. Good? I was just going to – oh, go ahead, Alejandra. Yeah, Alejandra, do you have a question real quick? Oh, uh, yes. I have this book, but I'm not sure if it's – the, the picture is different from yours. I think that's it. I think that's it. Is it second edition? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. The picture is a different one. Uh, the sh it should be okay. Go to the syllabus tab and double check the ISBN numbers. It should be the same. I think so. Because that book only has version one and version two. Oh. But what's, what happened, it only has first the first edition, which th that is not it, and the second edition. But sometimes they change the cover so it can get be cheaper they do something weird for colleges like sometimes okay all right thank you yeah but match up the isbn numbers and you should be fine all right thank you all right good to see you right. we'll see you next time okay guys i gotta run bye, bye. Good night, professor. okay bye we'll see you later bye, bye you guys be good stay safe <laughs>